Okay. Now we are back. What's going on, guys? Welcome to today's stream. Now, what are we going to be doing today, guys? We are building the Slack clone, right? So we have tons of stuff to look forward to today. We have React, we have Redux, and that's just a few things, right? We have style components. That's new, right? We've always, we've always wanted to do style components. So now we're going to do it because why wait, right? And we also have Firebase hooks. Now, if you've never used Firebase hooks and you used to hate that user effect that we used to write, Today's the day where everything changes. I promise you guys, it's going to be a lot of fun, right? Now, we don't let any you know, technical hurdles beat us. We're going to completely crush it. We beat the internet. Don't ask how I did that. <laughs> but we are hopefully back. We are here to stay. Papa fam, let's jump in today, to, into today's build, right? If you're not, if, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, jump over to Twitch, right? Twitch is actually a really nice viewing experience. It would be a lot clearer for you if you don't find YouTube that great, okay? So without further ado, guys, this is what we're gonna be building today. Hope you enjoy it. Smash the thumbs up button. Let's get those likes back up. Let's see how far we can get today. Without further ado, guys, check it out. This is what we're building. We have full user authentication. We wouldn't expect anything less, right? So we're gonna go ahead and log in. And guys, just before anyone asks, this is different to the other Slack build, okay? This is different. We actually have completely rebuilt this one in a much better way. And it uses Redux to power all of this stuff, okay? So we got multiple channels over here. Let's go ahead and jump into a channel, right? A really nice thing about this one is if I go ahead and say, hey guys, check this out. Scrolls to the bottom, pops the message in, right? So that's a nice little feature as well in this one. But let's go ahead and jump into this build, right? We have React, we have Redux, we have styled components, right? We have material UI, right? So over here, we have material UI to go ahead and get these icons to get the look and feel of the application. And guys, we have Firebase hooks. Now, Firebase hooks is a hell of a lot of fun. Trust me, when you see it today and how I use it, whoa, wow, you're gonna be like, you're gonna be impressed, guys. It's a lot of fun, right? Now, I want this to be fun. I don't want this to be like a super serious, everything kind of, you know, we just get too like, serious about coding right i want it to be a lot of fun i want you guys to just sit back relax don't worry too much about following along in time all i want you guys to do is have fun be a part of the papa fam and guys just wanted to mention that we have two days left in the sale to jump inside of the papa fam zero to full stack hero community right first link in the description make sure you check it out because after that i'm going to close the doors to the community for a while so we can focus on the course itself and just treat our you know, the Papa fan with some love, okay? So make sure you go check it out. First link in the description. I think we should jump into this build, guys. I think we should smash the thumbs up button for getting through that pain. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and jump into today's build, okay? So first thing that we wanna do, guys, is go ahead and you wanna go and open up a terminal, right? The first command you wanna open, you wanna run is npx create react app. Okay, so you want to go ahead. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys, All right? MPX create React app. Then you want to drop a name. Okay, so in this case, I'm doing Slack clone YouTube. And today, because we're using Redux, we're going to be using the Redux template. Okay, so this is <laughs> Finn Haas says, love the hairstyle so much. I'm asking my mom if she can cut it like that. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's very nice of you. Uh, Avni says, when's the Spotify playlist coming? Oh, I will send that out to everyone. If you guys, I know you guys love this playlist, right? So it's a lot of fun. And guys, I just want to mention, right? We're not going to split this video up in several p parts because nobody enjoys that. It's going to be one video crushing it. It's the video you need for Slack. I said it. Let's do it. Let's jump into this. All right. So Firebase. First thing we want to do is go ahead and execute this command to set up our app, right? So we're using Create React App today. If you're new to the channel, you're gonna learn a hell of a lot today. So it's gonna be an interesting one. Make sure you got your water, you make sure you got your coffee, everything ready, okay? So this will go ahead, set up a React template application, okay? So in this case, we can go ahead and CD into our app. So CD Slack, oops, Slack clone YouTube, okay? I'm inside right now. Now what I want to do is go ahead and do code insiders. If you have the normal VS code, you just have to do code, but I'm going to do code insiders dot. And that's because I use the beta version. Okay. So that will go ahead and spin up a coding environment for us. Right. So this is going to be the easiest way to get up and running with, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know how we do it. I said it, I said it, right. Let's go ahead and carry on. All right. So in this case, Slack clone, here we go. 
This is what you want to do, guys, right? You'll get your starter template over here. Now, jumping into source, you'll see a few different folders that you might not be used to if you go ahead and do the regular create react app. The new folders that you want to be interested in are this one over here. We've got features with this random counter folder. We've got this over here, counter module and all this other stuff, right? So I'm going to show you guys, break it down, make it very simple. But before we do that, I want to actually go ahead and prep my Firebase. So I want to go to firebase.google.com. And then what I want to do is go to, <laughs> I love that one by Gwen. He goes, uh, <laughs> uh, he replied to a certificate comment. Yeah, guys, honestly, I don't know why everyone's so obsessed with certificates. Get the work, right? Get the skill. Screw the certificates. Let's carry on. All right. I'm, I'm telling you straight. Papa, we don't mess around in the Papa farm. We just get jobs. That's it, period, right? So in this case, you want to click on go to console. All right. Once we've got this up and running. And we're just going to get into a coding flow today. It's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. We're just going to get into this and we're just going to run, right? So once your Firebase console is up and running, you want to go here and you want to make sure you jump in and add a project. Okay, so here you want to do Slack. Oops, Slack clone. I'm going to say Slack clone YouTube. All right, so mine's going to be for the YouTube. And I'm going to go hit and click continue. Now I'm not going to enable Google Analytics. You can if you want. But I'm, I'm not going to do it, okay? Guaro Gerard says, great to have you back. Thank you, dude. Really, really appreciate the support. Dash Santos, welcome, man. Dash, you killed it in the challenge, in the Netflix challenge, a five-day challenge. If anyone hasn't done it, check it out. Make sure you do. It was a hell of a lot of fun, right? Zubi says, is this live? Well, I answered your question, dude. Let's jump in. All right, so finishing up, let's click on continue. At this point, we should be thrown into the Firebase console where we want, okay? This is perfect. So now what we want to do is click this little cog icon, okay? Click project settings, right? Let's go ahead, guys, and smash that thumbs up button as well, guys. So smash the thumbs up button because we had a technical issue where we already had like through 250 likes or something before the video started. But this is a little bit of a technical glitch. So smash the like button if you're watching. It will help this video get to as many people as possible. We have 183 people watching. So guys, I should see 183 likes. Come on, guys. Let's, let's keep on going. What's up, Luke? Good to see you, man. Luke was uh, an amazing member of the Netflix challenge. Hell of a lot of fun. And now he is inside Zero to Full Stack Hero and he's officially part of the Papa fam. Welcome, dude. All right. So you want to go down here, click on this web icon. Now over here, I'm going to type in Slack clone YouTube. Set up Firebase hosting. Boom. Register the app. And let's carry on. All right. So I can see uh, Twitch comments as well, guys. What's up, Comp and Code? Right, so I'm gonna click next. And then at this point, if you haven't installed this, you're gonna probably have to do this and you most have most likely have to do sudo npm install dash g. So you make sure you do that, okay? At this point, I'm gonna do that later. So I'm gonna click continue. Now, I just wanna say welcome to everyone. We've got 111 likes. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Let's get it to 200. Let's get that number up. Let's get the energy up. Let's go, all right? This is what I'm talking about, man. Craig Williams, bro, thank you for this. You really are motivating developers. Dude, thank you for watching, honestly, okay? Let's go down here. Let's go ahead and hit the config. Now, this is what we need, the Firebase config over here, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to jump over to my code, right? So now, obviously, my code, this is not ideal. I'm going to open up a second desktop, and you guys should get familiar with setting up a flow like this, okay? So you want your flow to be very efficient. So this way, I'm looking at my Firebase over here, and I've got my code editor over here. Perfect. I don't need the terminal anymore, so I can close that. So at this point, guys, what I want to do is I want to go to the source. And before we even do anything, I'm going to add a file called firebase.js. And remember that config over here that we grabbed? I'm just going to click copy one more time, jump here, paste. All right. So that's our starting point. OK, uh, Prothon says, I really liked your LinkedIn clone. Thank you so much, guys. We're already at 121 likes. Come on, let's get the energy up, man. Let's get this energy up. I really, really love being back. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just pumped to be back, okay? Because this is going to be a hell of a lot of fun, this one. I actually got really excited because Styled Components is in this build. So it's going to be something new for everyone who's watching on this channel. And, uh, and guys, trust me when I say this code is clean. It is clean. This is like one of the cleanest bits of code I've written. So let's jump into this. All right. Go ahead over to app.js. And what I want to do is I don't need the app.test.js file, logo SVG, and setup test. So this will freeze my computer because if my loyal followers know, I can't delete stuff without it dying. So I'm going to click move to trash. And we're just going to wait. Oh, wow. It actually worked. <laughs> People like Gwen or Papa Fam will know that that's been a struggle. All right, let's carry on. Nice. So what we're going to do here is grab everything inside the header. 
and boom, I'm gonna type in H1 and let's say, let's build Slack. Let's build Slack, boom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and delete these two lines right here. We don't need the counter, we don't need the logo. And I'm gonna change this to a lowercase a. However, we're gonna be using, um, we're not using BEM today, we're using style components. So it's gonna be a lot of fun, right? A hell of a lot of fun. Now what I wanna do is command J, right? Command J, open up my terminal. And while everything's working, we're gonna go ahead and click this features over here. Now I want you guys to pay like very close attention to what I'm about to do, okay? So inside of features, right, we have counter slice. Now what I want you to do is grab counter slice and drag it on top of features. Because what's actually happened is it's inside of a folder called counter, okay? So I want you to drag counter slice on top of features, click move. Now you can see it's outside the counter folder. So at this point, I want you to right click on counter and click delete. Right, we don't want the counter folder anymore, okay? Perfect, now we have counter slice. And this is all part of Redux, okay? So everything here is part of Redux. And uh, I really love NJ Dave's comment here. He says, repetition is the best way to learn. And dude, I completely agree with you. Honestly, I completely agree with you. Repetition is the way to go, right? At this point, we're gonna get an error. So I wanna go into my app, store.js. And here, because we got rid of that counter folder, I need to go here and say, Boom, get rid of that. So it's features forward slash counter slice. Now we will be renaming this in a bit, but we'll come back to Redux in a second, okay? So delete through the terminal says Robert. Hey, <laughs> I have actually done that before. It's actually quicker. Um, Hash says, dad, I can donate to you in PayPal. Give me your link. Oh shit, thank you, dude. There's a link to donate inside the description. Um, there's a tips and donation link. Thank you so much, dude, appreciate you. All right, let's carry on guys. So um, we're gonna go back to our app.js and here inside the terminal, I'm gonna go ahead and type in yarn start because we're using yarn today because that's what we do now, right? Before we used to use NPM, but you know, I started to enjoy the, the yarn side of things. Like some, some people are looking at me right now, like with that, e with that evil eye, they're just like, Yo, why, why don't you use NPM? But here's what it is, you know? All right, so now we're gonna carry on. I've already got an app running on this port over here. So I'm gonna click on yes, we'll open it up on 3001. And just while this loads guys, I just wanna run you through the app one more time, okay? So we have our amazing chat functionality over here, right? So this is a fully fledged Slack clone, right? So it's fully fledged. If we go into like a chat over here, and I'm gonna show you how to deploy all of this. We have this beautiful sidebar, everything over here. You can see it pulls our name from and our picture from Google, login, really, really nice stuff. And you can go ahead and even add a channel. So let's go ahead and say this was the, like, let's just say it's a Papa chat, right? Okay. And let's jump into the Papa chat. And let's go ahead and say, you see it says message Papa. So if I go ahead and say, yo, what's up? And look at that guys, we get a nice Slack interface, right? So really, really slick. Okay. And this is going to be using style components. It's so clean. Honestly, I really want you guys to look forward to this. Now, um, if I click this and there you see, right? So you can go and sign up. So I'm gonna sign in one more time so that we have this as a reference and then I'm gonna be building a fresh app out of this, right? So now I'm gonna go over and while this is loading, give it one second. I'm just gonna quickly log into that account and then this will redirect in just a sec. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull over the local host one. So this is our fresh app, okay? It says let's build Slack. This is where you guys should be at this point. Now I do wanna mention, if you can't or you find it hard to kind of code along with me, then remember guys, the second link in the description actually actually has the link to the Papa GitHub repo, which is actually on sale as well right now. We have 25% off and you can pretty much go ahead, grab it, and it's got the code for Slack inside of it, as well as every single clone I've ever done before. Make sure you go ahead and check it out if you get stuck and you know you can't keep up with everything that's going on. So uh, it will help you out in terms of sticking uh, in sticking up to speed with me, okay? So let's carry on guys. Uh, please don't spam the chat, dude. So I'm gonna go ahead and chuck you in timeout. So don't spam that. And everyone's asking about why I've left CP. Uh, guys, there's, I don't need a reason. I just don't wanna, I wanna kind of carry on on my own route. And I feel, I feel like I can deliver actual value here in the way that I feel is most efficient, okay? And plus we've got the pop of fam guys, like get with it, right? Let's carry on. Let's go, let's build Slack, all right? So the first thing we wanna do, right? This is gonna be a slightly different tutorial, right? So the first thing we wanna do is we will be using React Router in today's build, right? So that way we can have page routing inside of our application. So a lot, a lot of fun in today's build, okay? And guys, we're almost at 200 likes. Let's smash the likes, let's get them up, right? We were at 200 before it even started. So this is gonna be a fresh one. The first stream went down, but we are not gonna let this one beat us, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install React Router. So I'm gonna go over here and say React Router 
in Google. Okay, we're going to wait till this loads out and then I'm going to go to the React Career Docs, right? And let's see. And let's click on declarative routing for React.js. And let's wait a sec. There we go. The stream's perfectly fine at this point. It will jump over to uh, Twitch if you're having any issues. So at this point, we can go ahead and we're going to copy this. We need to install React Router DOM, okay? So I'm going to copy this, go back to my app. And I like to have a split terminal. So a lot of people don't like to have uh, sort of split. They had a second one. I like to have a, a split terminal because then I can see both things at once. But what I do is I make this one smaller, okay? So that way I can see everything. Here I'll say yarn add and I'll do React Router DOM. Boom, okay? Mohammed says, I love you, Sonny. You're just amazing. Thank you, dude. What's up, Asad? Good to see you, man. All right, so we're installing React Router DOM. So now we have React Router inside our app. The easiest way to get this up and running, go ahead, copy the import statements. Let's go ahead and pop this in right here. Boom, copy. And let's go ahead and paste it over here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab everything inside of Router. There we go. And then let's jump over here. All right. So... Atau says, hey, Sonny, can we use React hooks over Redux? Of course you can. Let's go ahead and paste it inside of here, right? And I'm going to get rid of my H1 over here. So at this point, if we save our application, you should be able to see what I see at this point, right? So we've got a router. And what we want to do is everything inside the nav, we don't want that. Okay, I don't really care about all that stuff right now. We don't care about that, right? Then the thing that I need next is I'm going to change this div into an actual, just a fragment, okay? Because I actually don't need that div at this point. I'm going to get rid of this comment. Now, what is a React Router, okay? So a React Router allows us to have different pages on our website. So if we go to forward slash, it will take us to this home component. If we go to forward slash users, it will take us to the users component. And if we go to forward slash about, it will take us to the about component. Now we don't have these pages. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, harsh, please don't spam, dude. I will be sending it out, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say H1, and let's just say this is the home page. And just to make it extremely clear, now when we're on the home page, what will happen is I'm going to make it firstly an exact um, route, which means you have to land on the home page only. And now if we go back to our application, let's go ahead and check it out. It says this is the home page. Okay. Perfect stuff works just as we expected it. So now we have a React router set up. Your grad said, I recently got an internship internship because of you your youtube streams thanks dude and great job you did that dude that's amazing i'd love to have you inside the papa fam so check it out zero to full stack hero first link in description dude jump in with us please i love having success stories inside of it and we have we literally had gwen and alex who just landed jobs as well so crazy stuff let's carry on guys All right so christopher says hey sunny thanks for the quality lessons with your help i was able to get a job with a fortune 500 company let's go man that's sick. Well done, dude. That is so sick. Dude, that is incredible stuff, right? So now we've got the homepage here. So what we need to do now, app.css, clear everything. We don't want anything. Go to index.css. And at the top, I want to do the following. I want to say target everything with a margin of zero. And what I'm going to do is you guys love when I do this. I'm going to go ahead and pop this on one side and pop the code, uh, the actual application on the other side. So let's go ahead and pop this over here. Perfect. So now you guys can see I've got, uh, if I go ahead and add this zero, margin of zero, you guys should be able to see. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. You see this little imaginary gap over here, right? This is going to go ahead and disappear when we add a margin of zero. So if I go ahead and save, you can see, boom, it gets rid of the imaginary gap. Okay, so that's the first step that we wanted to do. The second step that I actually want to do is I'm going to set something in body today, right? I'm going to set a CSS variable. Now, a CSS variable is a very similar to a JavaScript variable, pretty much. It just holds a value, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to have a slack color, right, CSS variable. And this is how we define it, right? We pretty much just say slack color, and then we do this. We just give it the color, and now we can go ahead and access the slack color like so. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say overflow hidden. So that way, in case we have any overflow inside of our app, we're going to hide it. Okay, so I'm just going to protect myself for later on. So now, boom, get rid of that and then get rid of that. Now we're back inside of app.js. So firstly, I'm going to mark out the application. Okay, so let's look at the final application and see what we got to do. So we have a few things in this build, right? We have the header. So we have this beautiful header over here. Okay, we have a nice looking header. We have a sidebar over here. We have a chat input component. We have the chat itself over here. And uh, we also have the login stuff, right? So if I wanna go, go ahead and go back here, we have the login page. So what I might do first is actually build maybe the, uh, 
Let's build, now let's start building the app first. It's always funner to start building the actual application first. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing that one first. Uh, encourage many friends of mine to watch your videos. Hashtag Papa Fam. That's what we're talking about, guys. Amazing stuff. All right, Atal says, bro, just do one session on React Hooks. Dude, I cover all of that inside the Zero to Four Stack Hero. First link, dude, best community on the planet. I said it because it's true, period. Let's carry on. All right, so this is the homepage, okay? And uh, you know you're good when you start getting people to copy your builds, you know? Pretty fun. Pretty fun when you get that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save. There we go. And then here you can see I have... Um, hey, nice. Finha. Uh, okay, let's carry on. So we've got the homepage over here, right? So what I'm going to do now is for the homepage, uh, I'm going to go ahead and actually, firstly, let's go ahead and do the, the header component, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and set up a header component. So over here... I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, the header will go here, the header, like so, all right? So what I need to do is obviously create a header component. So I'm going to say header.js. Now I'm using snippets, okay? So I'm using RFCE allows me to create a functional component. How did I do that in case you're new to the channel? Go to extensions and you want to make sure you get this extension right here. ES7, React Redux, GraphQL, React Native Snippets. They are incredible, okay? Really, really incredible stuff. And uh, yeah, just make sure you, you you download this. Look, 2 million, 2, uh, 2 million, 2.3, 2.4 million. Wow, crazy stuff, right? Let's carry on. So at this point, we've got the header, okay? So let's jump into the header and see what we need. So the first thing I'm going to need inside the header is let's have a look at it. We have a header left section. So I'm going to assume that this is my header left section. And then I have a header middle with this fancy input. And then I have a header right with just this little icon over here. Now, how do I get these icons, right? I need something called material UI, right? So I'm going to go ahead and jump into that right now. I'm going to go ahead and go over to materialui.com and I'm going to install this into my project. So the first thing I want to do is it says npm install material UI. Now, if I'm using yarn, I simply copy, I jump over command J and I do yarn add material UI core. Okay, so that will work perfectly for me. At this point, what I can do, what's up, Pranav? I can go here and say icons because what you need to do is you need to in, in, uh, install the core as well as the icons that come with Material UI. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that as well. And then once it's done, I'm going to say yarn add Material UI icons. Boom, perfect. All right, Mr. Zach says, what's the subject today? What are we building? All right, we're going to be building the Slack clone, right? But it's a Redux styled components jacked up version incredible stuff right um hash there is a link in the description dude you can go ahead and check it out it's at the bottom thank you so much dude right so at this point what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and say uh we've already done this now to search for those icons i'd simply go to this link here where it says you can search for the full list of these icons i click that okay and then here you can see i've got a search right so if i go ahead and type in send for example it'll give me a send icon and it'll give me the import statement for it this is how i go ahead and do that right this is how i find all the icons that we're going to need throughout the builds okay now guys we're almost at 200 likes smash that thumbs up button to help this video get out to as many people as possible it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun today guys let's carry on Right? We would have been at 400 if that stupid internet, right? But it's fine. We're all good. We, we're stronger than this. I think we can keep pushing. I really think we can keep going, right? So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say, um, close this because we've already got that, right? So we have the header. Now, I'm going to be using styled components. Now, what are styled components, okay? Styled components are simply put, we're not going to be using CSS in, this, in the traditional way where we import a CSS file and then we kind of, you know, we style out some stuff and we use the BEM naming convention, typically where a div has a class name and then we sort of target the class name. But today we're changing things, right? We're changing it up. We're going to be using something called styled components. Now, I'm going to show you what styled components are all about, why they're so popular, okay? So styled components, they have pretty much the power behind um they, they're pretty much more powerful than css modules they do a lot of head like uh, of heavy lifting for you behind the scenes and they make your app extremely fast now if you're wondering who uses it just check out this list right tons of places use this thing right so all these folks use it vimeo vogue uh the onion i don't know what that is but uh eurostar coinbase that get that dogecoin guys get it right and this is pretty much how we define it you pretty much use define a variable so imagine we want to define a button and then you pretty much say style dot and then you give this sort of if it was a div here i'd say div and then you pretty much give some css inside of it now trust me it's not as tricky as you think okay it's really not that tricky i'm going to show you guys how to do it all so we're going to click documentation 
and we're going to click installation over here okay so uh, is it says npm install and then start components and guys this is the papa fam video okay so like if you want to be a part of the papa fam community first link in the description make sure you check it out we're already 200 strong inside the community it's crazy so i'm going to go ahead and grab start components here and i'm going to say yarn add start components boom okay um perfect gwen says i love the fact that we can actually pause the video <laughs> And I'm going to go to the bottom, okay? So to make sure I'm at the bottom, I go to the second last tag, comma, and I'm going to go ahead and paste. So you see resolution styled components, all right? So it's a very simple thing. You just need to copy what I just did there, okay? 200 likes. That's what I'm talking about, guys. See, we had issues with the internet. We didn't let that stop us. Papa Fam is way stronger than that. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Honestly, just keep on going. All right, I'm going to hit save on that and it's still installing the styled components. So we can give that just a sec and uh, be patient with that one. All right, and you can see pretty much after that, we can just use them. Okay, so we're going to use that firstly inside of the uh, inside of our header component. And trust me, guys, it will make a lot of sense when we jump into this and when we start running with it. Okay, so we're going to pretty much just, okay, we're going get, to get ready for this. Okay, um, so let's carry on, guys. And uh, what we're going to do now is... All right so please don't spam dude i hate it when people spam like i'm actually gonna block people from this channel if you spam so ayush man dude you're out all right let's go so um right what we're gonna it was installing the style components that's why i was kind of freaking out so at this point we have style components installed okay so what we're gonna do is is we're gonna go here and even this one dude wow so many people are spamming dude so any moderator so pranav do you mind just sort of you know you can time out people i'll give you permission Go ahead and just clean up that chat All right so over here what we're gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and rather than having divs right this is how we use styled components okay so i'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for you guys i think that might be easier for you to see so how do we go ahead and use a first thing is we don't have a css file so it's really nice in that sense okay we get rid of the css file now what we do is it actually lives underneath file so it's really nice in that sense okay that's the sort of standard that we should be doing okay so it should live underneath the uh the stream over here so at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and have a header container. Okay. So I'm going to say const header container like this. Okay. Equals styled, right? Because it's styled components, which we have to import. Oh no, it's not that one. Oops. Not that. Definitely not that one. All right. What we're going to do instead, we're going to import it and we're going to go ahead and say import styled from styled components like this. And we say styled.div. Okay. Now here, what we need to do is go ahead and do back ticks. So these are not regular ticks guys. Okay. So they're back ticks. Okay. So you do back ticks and then what you want to do is start styling it. Okay. So let's just say, imagine the color of the text here was red. Okay. So we said color, let's just say red. Okay. So these are back ticks, etc. Let's go ahead and do that. And then, oops, I need to go ahead. Mine has like nice syntax highlighting. Okay. And you might be wondering, but Sunny, mine looks a bit like this. Right, everything is this color. Now, what you need to do, okay, is you need to go ahead and guys, if anyone's having issues with the internet, pretty much just go ahead and uh, refresh your browser and it should be all good to go now, okay? So we should be fine. You just need to do a refresh and it's all good. Okay, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna play my music instead of doing the, uh, the other one. Okay, there we go. So at this point, what we're gonna do is go ahead and jump over to your extensions okay so over here in the extensions panel i'm going to go ahead into extensions and you want to grab this over here okay so grab the where is it gone you want to make sure you get vs code styled components extension and what this does is it gives you color syntax highlighting for your styled components without it it's going to be a bit of a headache okay and uh guys if anyone asks why i'm not with cp anymore i'm just gonna block you honestly it's really annoying uh guys <laughs> i'm I, I deliver more value over here period and we've got you know chill out all right let's carry on all right so i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one the stream is not ended you can just refresh dude all right so at this point where we have the header okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say header container okay and now you can see what's happened is this has simply got these styles injected into it so now if i have a h1 which says test okay and i go into my app.js and i import the header like so and i save i'm going to go ahead and pop this to the side and let's go ahead and go back over here okay now 
inside of here you can see what the really cool thing about this right is if i go ahead and say background color so let's do background color red and then i'm going to go ahead and refresh let me see my header container is a style div there we go the background color is red um interesting okay let's double check what's going on here but what we want to do is let's just start jumping into actually the coding aspect of it oh there we go that's why um okay i know why so at this point imagine i want to target that h1 what i need to do is i just go ahead and say okay target the h1 inside of here and give it a color of red so let's go ahead and do color of red like this save all right and this will go ahead and uh this will actually this will do it right it's actually i'm not sure why it's not re-rendering let's double check what's happening over here all right so what i would recommend is if you do experience any of these issues control c and then you're going to do yarn start again okay the reason why this is happening is because we've installed style components we need to make sure that we go ahead and restart our terminal i'm going to do y 3001 and then we'll wait for this to start up again okay right and i'm going to go ahead and refresh save perfect now style div okay i'm going to say color let's just say green and then let's go ahead and pop it in perfect and now we'll go ahead and we'll fix this in a sec okay i'm not sure exactly what i've done here but uh let's go ahead and carry on i'm going to carry on with the build and then we'll fix this okay so we have the header container right now the header container is going to have a bunch of style inside of it but as we mentioned before we have a header left section okay so inside of here i'm going to have a header left so let's go ahead and say like a header left uh, we're going to have a header right, and I'm going to show you guys what I'm referring to here. So imagine on a local host, 3000. So this is our actual Slack app. And I'll show you how to do that cool stuff as well. We'll say header middle or sort of header search. We'll call the middle one. All right, header search. And then we'll have header right. Okay, header right. All right now, is green not green? Oh, okay. Uh, really? Oh, wait a sec. No, that shouldn't be the reason, right? Color green oh dude you're right yeah you're actually right let's go ahead and do that boom there we go and it will actually pop in now so if we go ahead and say h1 test save there we go that's correct yeah you're right my bad <laughs> nice shout daniel good shit all right so let's go ahead and carry on so there you go you see it applies the style to that div okay so we have three sections over here so what are we referring to at this point? Header left is going to be the left section. We've got the middle section, which is going to be the search. And then we've got the right section over here. So let's go ahead and jump through. Okay. So header left. First thing we're going to do is create a const. And we're going to say header left. So I'm going to go ahead and say const header left, like so, equals a style div, right? And remember, you if you want a h1 or h2, you can just say style dot h2. And it works in that way as well, right? So uh, that's actually really cool. Uh, Ayush man, dude, you continue to spam. So dude, like I'm hiding you from the channel now. I've, I've warned once and, and it just continued to continue to spam, dude. So you're out. All right. So let's go ahead and carry on. So we've got the header left. So we're going to go ahead and create a header left section over here. And this is actually very clean, guys, because if you think about it this way, your CSS is never going to go ahead and overlap. OK, it's never going to overlap, which is amazing if you do it this way, uh, whereas CSS by itself can easily overlap. So you have to be careful with that. OK, now we do. We are going to use an avatar here. So this top left section over here is an avatar, right? So it's, it act, it's actually derived from material UI. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this over here. So I'm going to say import avatar from material UI core like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and actually rather than directly using the uh, material UI avatar, I'm going to make it a styled component. And I'm kind of getting sick of that music. So I want my music back on Epidemic. Boom. There we go. We're going to have our tunes back. There we go. It's going to be a lot of fun now. This helps me get into a jam, you know, that kind of, you know, a jam state. Psycho Coda, what's up, dude? Welcome to the stream, man. Smash the thumbs up button if you're here and you're enjoying it. It's going to be a lot of fun today. So buckle up and we're going to get into a nice flow at this point. Okay. So header left let's go ahead and build out this left section all right so to have a styled avatar right how do we do that so over here i'm going to say const and let's go ahead and say header avatar okay and you can actually name these whatever you want there is no real standard at this point you can define it but what if it's not a default sort of like div or h1 what if it's actually like a custom component right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to grab the avatar and all i do is i do parentheses avatar right that's how you do it 
and then I have the double uh, quotes. Right? And then you can make your own styled component out of it, which is actually incredibly simple. Okay, so really, really easy. Now, Random Rabbit Studio says, I actually like putting my style components in its own file. Good spot. So you can, right? You very easily can move your styled components out of the code base and into their own files. In this tutorial, I'm going to be building it inside of the same file and we're going to be doing that way. But I will be introducing a folder structure in this build. So good thing you reminded me, dude. I'm going to go ahead and say components. Right. And inside the components folder, I'm going to grab my header and I'm going to drag it inside now. And all of our components, except the high level one like app.js, and I'm going to update the imports. Yes. Let's go ahead and go and save our import import. Sorry. So inside of app.js, now it says components header save. Make sure when you do that, it, it all works. OK, I'm going to refresh. And let's go ahead and see if we made any mistake. OK, so it should be all good now at this point and it's compiling, there we go. Okay, so at this point, the header left, right? So header avatar, sorry. Inside of header left, what I'm gonna do is have a header avatar. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in here. So I'm gonna say header avatar, right? Header avatar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and it's a self-closing bracket, okay? So what we're gonna do at this point is Oh, dude, I, I really am getting irritated with these like with these spammy comments, dude. I see it. But if you continue to like send messages, I'm just going to block you. OK, so at this point, um, on click, right? I'm going to have an on click for this one. This is going to be the sign out, but we're going to do that afterwards. I'm going to say to do and I've, that's a special extension that I'm using there. And I'm going to say add on click. Right. So we're going to come back to that one and then we're going to say the alternative and the source. Now, the source here would actually be something like the user's picture. Okay, so this is going to be the user's picture as we see here, but we're going to go ahead and leave it blank for now. Okay, so it's going to be a blank image for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to have the time icon. So the time icon is this one over here. Okay, so let's carry on. Let's go ahead and jump over here. So I'm going to go ahead and save at this point and let's see if we see it. There we go, guys. Look, our first little import. Perfect. OK, um, and Pranav, don't go ahead and, and uh, you know, don't, don't worry. Just don't acknowledge people who spam. That's fine. Um, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and leave the header avatar. Now at this, the next thing I'm going to do is pop in a icon. OK, so from Material UI. So here I'm going to say import access time icon. I'm going to go underneath here, pop it in there like so. Now we have our time icon as well, which should just jump in in a second. There we go, guys. OK, so we have the little icon and I'm going to make this eventually look like this. OK, so stay tuned and you'll find out how. So header left. The first thing I want to do is I want to give my header container some styles. So how do we do it when we're using styled components? It's pretty simple, actually. We pretty much go here and we just assume that this is regular CSS inside of here. So we say display flex and we do our regular sort of things, right? So we say display flex and this takes normal CSS rules. So at this point, we don't see much changing. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and firstly jump into my header left styles. OK, so here I'm going to say header left div. And inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pop in the following styles. So we said display flex in here and I want this one to take up a third of the overall screen. So I'm going to say flex 0 0.3. OK, then I want this also to be a type display flex. I'm going to align the item centrally. So I'm going to go ahead and say align item centrally and I'm going to give it a margin left of 20 pixels because I don't want it to touch rich programmer. What's up, dude? Frank in the house. Awesome Slack 2.0 build. Let's go, man. Thank you so much, Frank, for that clutch donation. Appreciate you, dude. All right. Stormbreaker um, Redux template is actually extremely easy. And if you want to find the easiest thing to use, it's recoil. Uh, we cover it inside the course. But yeah, recoil is the easiest thing to use, guys. All right. So the back ticks are for the syntax, yes, because we're, we actually have some kind of in, uh, props interpolation some, at some points, okay? Now to target this, right, to target this icon. So material UI icons by default get the special class and it's called material UI SVG icon dash root, okay? So at this point, what I'm going to do is in, if there is ever an icon inside of here, right, inside the header left, so in this case, access time icon, I'm going to target the icon by doing this. And this means inside header left, I'm going to target the material UI SVG root icon and I'm going to apply a style. So here what I'm going to do is go ahead and say margin left auto and margin right 30 pixels. Save it. And at this point, you can see we're starting to get this spacing correct. Nice. 
okay and the reason why this is good is because we're doing a flex rule so this entire sort of top is flex and then we're saying 0.3 flex so it's only taking up 30 percent at this point right so this is 30 percent okay so it shouldn't save there but this is actually 30 percent at this point right my arrows are a bit dodgy okay so we have a 30 percent looking you know left side over there which is pretty good so let's go ahead and carry on so you guys can already see it's pretty nice actually to be fair right it's actually pretty nice now what if i want to target that header avatar right so i'm going to go over to the header avatar and i want to make it so that it actually looks like it's a clickable element so first thing i'm going to say okay grab it and say cursor pointer right and then what i'm going to say is when i hover over it so you see how we can apply the styles here it's actually quite a nice syntax right when I hover over, I'm going to say the opacity should change to 0 0.8. Okay. So when I do this, now check this out, guys. When I hover over this, can you see that, right? That's quite a nice little effect that we have going on over there. Right. Finn Ha says, does zero to full stack hero also talk about how to get clients? Yes, dude. We actually talk about that a lot. We do. see zero to full stack hero is not just about building and constantly coding. It's about how you go ahead and take those skills and actually land jobs, land freelancing clients. A lot of coaching calls, we talk about people who just had interviews, my tips and tricks on how they can approach interviews. And every week it's amazing because we can go ahead and have a chat with our with our own sort of, you know, students inside the course and we can see how their progression goes. Now, what's amazing about that, guys, and I will carry on in just a sec, is that people have got jobs and then we have feedback sessions in the coaching course. So really, honestly, you won't find that anywhere else. So it's, it's for the community. That's why we've done it, right? Uh, Emerson says it's about the community best ever. Exactly, dude. It's all about the community. That's exactly what we strive for inside, right? So for the header container, I'm going to go ahead and say position fixed and I'll show you what I'm doing. It's a little bit of a hack what I'm doing here, but I'm going to say position is fixed. I'm going to say a width of 100 percent and uh, this will make a lot of sense later. Right, and I'm going to say align the item centrally and this will come into play in just a sec afterwards. Line item center. And then I'm going to go ahead and say justify the content space between. Give it a bit of padding. So let's go ahead and pop that in. Save. And you can see it should have a little bit of padding at the top now. And then I'm going to say the background color. Remember that uh, CSS variable that we defined earlier, right? It has, to access it, all you need to do is type in var slack color, right? And remember where we defined this was inside of uh, index.css over here. Remember slack color, we defined the variable here, the CSS variable, and here we're using it, okay? And we're making the color of the text white. There we go. And that's because these are actually sort of simple bits of text pretty much. Okay. Um, I use something called screen brush for the, the sort of writing on the screen. What's up? Morocco's in the house. Hey, guys, we're almost at 300. 300 likes. Let's keep going, guys. Let's keep on going. All right. So this is looking pretty good, right? This is looking pretty good at this point. Now let's go ahead and fix the header search. Okay. So the header search section next. Priyanchu, what's up, man? Good to see you here, dude. Hey. Header search is the next bit. Okay, so over here, I'm going to say, okay, let's create a header search styled component. Perfect, right? And inside the header search, we're going to have the search icon. So the search icon is actually from Material UI. So I need to go ahead and import that. And you're probably wondering, but Sunny, you just wrote a header search, but you never defined it, right? What is that about? And you're right. I need to go ahead and define that. So I'll go down to the bottom and I'm going to just add it to the top so that way you guys can see. I'm going to say const header search, and this is going to be a styled div. And you can see, look, it's not really not that difficult to start getting the hang of it, okay? So you can go style div, and now we can access the styles for it. Very, very simple stuff, okay? Um, so perfect stuff. Now what we're going to do is Pranav. I'm not going to use that today, but I might use the uh, app bar for Material UI in a future build. That's a very good call, dude. Um, so at this point, I'm going to say header search. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and chuck the... We've already got the search icon over there. So I'm going to save, Okay. And then let's go ahead and you can see at this point, we've got some kind of search icon being pushed over to the right. And that makes sense. Okay. And I'll tell you why in a sec. So we've got the search icon over here and I'm going to have an input field. Now this input field is going to, hopefully my Emmet kicks in. There we go. It's going to be of type text by default. It's already type text. So we can get rid of that. And we're going to say the placeholder in this case is going to be to search the Papa fam, right? Cause this is going to be like the, uh, sort of the slack for the papa fam right and also just to mention guys if you didn't already know we have an incredible slack community inside zero to full stack hero first link in the description check it out sale runs out in two days guys then i'm closing the doors to the community so i want to miss out on it honestly second link is actually all of the code as well so you know we're going crazy with sales right now right 
So at the top of this screen, we have the search the Papa fan right now. I want that to look like this and be in the correct position. So how do I get it to that point? All right, I'm going to go over to my header search. And what's really cool is that if I command click, it will actually sort of open up the header search in the styled component location. So at this point, we have that over here, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and apply a bunch of styles. So this bit took up 0.3, so 30% of the screen. I want the middle bit to take up 40% of the screen, okay? So uh, Emerson says, incredible. No, it's outstanding. That's it. Jamie Davis, yo, yo, what's up, man? Good to see you here. I'm going to say flex 0.4 right and guys if you just noticed how quick we're growing like it's insane right we get more views and likes than channels with hundreds of thousands of subscribers like i think that's incredible i think we should be proud of that as a family man i think the whole papa fam should be proud of that as a team this is not just me this is built from you guys and this is what we're about okay so like let's go ahead and give ourselves like a huge pat on the back for that because honestly the way we're growing the way what is happening it's so damn powerful man so i'm going to go ahead and give this a border color this is a slight gray color and say text align center and you can start to see, guys, look, there's a slight background being uh, being chucked in. Jamie Davis, that's a testament to the value you provide us. Thank you so much, dude. Really, really appreciate that. Display flex, padding 0.50. I'm going to go ahead and chuck that in here. Save. And you can see it starts to line up. Okay, it's starting to line up. And then we're going to say color of gray and a border. I'm going to go ahead and chuck in the border and the color gray over here. Now, at this point, okay, yeah, it's looking okay. But I need to target that input field, right? So the thing I love about styled components is we're already inside of header search and inside of header search is an input field, which means that we can go ahead and target the input just like that, which is a lot simpler, right? Fantana says, Lord, we are amazing for sure. Thanks to you, Sunny. Appreciate it so much. Honestly, really, really appreciate the kind words. Thank you. At this point, I'm going to say the background color of this one is going to be transparent. Okay, so background color transparent i'm going to go ahead and get the energy up right now guys because we're about to break 300 likes i think we should step it up a bit let's go guys all right transparent there we go and at this point i'm going to go ahead and say border none and text align let's change the color up in here as well all right text align center and i'm going to give it a minimum width all right min width and i'm going to give this min width a 30 view width save and at this point you can see look at that it perfectly places itself in the way that we expected. Okay. Now at this point, this looks pretty good, but you see, we get this like kind of outline. Now the quick fix to the outline is you simply go ahead and do outline zero or none pretty much. I think zero would work. Yeah, there you go. Zero works nicely. And you see the color of the text, right? We're going to change that as well. I'm just going to make the color of the text to white. There we go. Save. Boom. All right. Sunny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there we go. Okay. So at this point, what we're going to do is we have the middle section complete. Now, the reason why it's not being pushed out like this is because we don't have our right section complete. So I'm going to go ahead and create the right section over this point. Right. So Christopher asked, he says, is, uh, is zero to full stack hero platinum only for a period of time or will it include include any future courses? So Christopher, just to let you know, the offer right now is currently a huge sale we have right now. So first link in the description, if anyone wants to know about that, but if you join now as part of this sale, it includes access to all the courses available right now, as well as all of the ones listed on the site. And that's not going to be the case after the sale. Okay. We're going to change it after the sale and the price is going to go up as well. And that's so that we can enable the community to stay with the quality, high quality individuals who want to be invested and kind of want to grow. So I, that's my treat to you guys for hitting 2021 K. If you didn't see my Instagram post, 20 k instagram 21k youtube now we're at 22 crazy stuff all right but yes it includes all access to all content packs platinum is lifetime diamond is lifetime silver and gold are monthly memberships okay so there you go dude let's carry on so the next thing concept is very cool dude i agree with you all right so um let's carry on guys so here we have this let's go ahead and create the header right okay so header right over here now what we're going to do is we're going to say right like we got, oh, nice. We just got a donation from Uncle Gatsby, 399. He says, hi, Sonny. Do you have any experience with Gatsby? If so, do you have any tutorials on it? Thank you so much for what you do for us. Dude, I love that. Thank you so much. To answer your question, we do, we are going to be covering Gatsby inside the course, uh, but we will be covering it. Okay. So just something to be aware of. Um, but in the future, hell yeah, dude, you know me, I'm going to cover all that stuff. All right. 
header right. Okay, so at this point, header right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create header right. So you wanna go down to the bottom, right? So I'm gonna go down to the bottom over here and say const header like this, header right, oops, and there we go. Now remember, if you, oh nice, we actually just got Sebastian, just join the Papa fam, dude. Uh, oh no, so he, <laughs> sorry, Sebastian donated, my bad. Uh, we've got someone else joined the Papa fam just a second ago. A bit confusing about two messages. Uh, there we go, let's carry on guys. So header right, okay, so we've got header right over here. And then inside of header right, what I'm gonna have is the simply the help outline icon. Okay, so it's a simple icon on the right hand side. So at this point, and I love, man, I love this song. I miss coming live, honestly, let's go. Help outline. This is how you have to cheer yourself up when the sort of tech issues get in the way. Let's carry on. I mean, I don't know anywhere else that has this kind of vibe when you code, honestly. Like, I love it. And this is what I thrive on. This is what I try and do. Let's go ahead and get rid of these comments. Like, if you're not having fun when you're coding, what are you doing? Honestly, it should be a fun experience, right? Like, as in, obviously, it gets, it gets painful. I'm not going to lie, right? It gets painful, right? Faizan, we have React Basics and Web Dev Essentials being released. Nice. I recommend anyone to join Platinum. Platinum is my recommendation for anyone to jump in. We have the sale ending in two days. Platinum is the one. Platinum is lifetime, dude. Like, don't waste your money on this membership, the monthly ones. Just do Platinum, get lifetime, and you're done. And then you'll be part of the community for everything, right? Which is crazy. Mohammed says, Sunny, your vibe is unstoppable. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Right. The music is actually part of my Epidemic Sounds playlist. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this one. Babo says, looking fresh. Thank you, dude. All right. Now let's go ahead and finish off styling the header right. Let's go ahead and do that. So over here, header right. Perfect. Jump down here to style our header right. And we're going to say the final bit should be a flex 0.3. Because think about it, guys. This was 0.3, which is 30%. This is 0.4, which is 40%. And then I want the final one to be 0.3. And that means it will be perfectly sort of positioned around, right? Vocal, the first link in the description to go ahead and check it all out. We're going to say flex 0.3. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and say display flex. There we go. And save. And now you can see, look at that, guys. Looks really, really clean right now, okay? And I'm going to actually align the items flex end so that way it sticks to the right. And if you ever get tempted to go ahead and do something like float. I will personally come to you and slap you. <laughs> so don't use float anymore, guys. It's old, it's it's gone. Don't do it, all right? Don't do that stuff. Let's carry on. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna target the material, UI, uh, the sort of material UI icon, okay? So at this point, I'm gonna say material UI icon like this. And inside of here, I'm gonna do margin left of auto, margin right, 20 pixels. Right, there we go. Sanjay loved that one. <laughs> so guys, look at that. That looks pretty fresh, right? Look at that, boom. I don't even see a difference, man. Look at that, no flicker, except the little icon. We will fix that, okay? So Flexbox is clean. Like if you learn how to use Flexbox, you're gonna kill it. Four likes away from 300 likes. Let's smash that like button and go forward, guys. Let's keep on going strong. Right, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is let's go ahead and build the sidebar, perhaps. Right, so I think we're done with that. Yep, we're done with that. And guys, look, this is just an example of how powerful uh, styled components is. Like, look how clean this is. Boom, look at that. And the CSS is just down there. And you can move this into a separate component if you want. I would recommend saying header.styled.js if you're gonna do it, okay? That would be my recommendation. We have 305 likes. Thank you so much, guys. Just keep on going. I love it. Just bring me back to life after that little tech issue. Let's, let's kill it, guys. Let's kill it. All right, so next thing I want to do is that sidebar, right? So I'm going to jump back over to app.js and you're going to see that we actually have a very clean build today, okay? So the next part, right, the entire app, what I'm going to assume is that this bit over here, so all of this is actually going to be something like an app body, okay? So this whole thing is going to be like the app body, right? And then the header is always going to show, right? That's how we're going to kind of build this out, right? So at this point, what I want to do is I'm going to have the header over here and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the header outside the switch, right? So the header should always be present here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have app body, right? And app body is going to have everything inside and it's all going to be determined by a switch, okay? Now at this point, um, what we're going to do is I'm, I'm actually change this build up a little bit. So we might actually not need to overcomplicate this, but eventually what we're going to have is a chat 
inside of here. Like, this is going to be a chat component, okay? And we will make it look super clean, super nice. Now, app body, what is that, right? So we need to go ahead and define it. So here I'm going to say const app body equals a styled div, right? Styled div, and there we go, back ticks. And then what is this uh, float that you talk about? So if you don't know what float is, then just, just don't worry about it. Just pretend you didn't hear anything. Right, so, so forget it exists. <laughs> you shouldn't be using float anymore. It's just it's an old way of handling things. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the top, and I'm gonna go ahead and do boom. Import start from start components. Save, right, and go ahead and refresh. There we go. Okay, so we have the app body. Now what I can do with this app body is I can start defining styles of everything that goes underneath it. Okay, so inside of there, all I'm gonna have is actually before we go ahead and finish that bit, I'm gonna have something called a sidebar. Okay. So over here, I'm gonna actually gonna have a sidebar component. So here I'll say, oops, I'm gonna say sidebar. And this will be responsible for this sidebar that you see right here, okay? So that's gonna be the sidebar over there. Now at this point, what I'm gonna do is, um, right, uh, my name's Sunny, dude, <laughs> vibe of. Uh, all right, so let's carry on. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a sidebar component. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it in here. So I'm gonna create, I'm gonna go into my components folder create sidebar.js okay and i'm going to say rfce right for a react functional component with an export right now over inside the sidebar let's go ahead and start coding this up right so the first thing i want to do is create a sidebar container so this one i'm going to change it to a sidebar container now over here i'm going to say const sidebar container equals a style div all right so it's going to be our surrounding container outside the application go ahead and pop that down like so now at this point, I need to make sure I ins import React styled components like this, okay? Now guys, we are gonna break 400 likes. I'm telling you, let's keep on pushing this energy. I love it. I really can't believe it. Like how small are sort of, not even small guys, 22,000 followers, like subscribers right now. But we just continue to break like what is expected from a, a channel with 22K subs, right? Let's keep on getting those likes up and let's just kill it. Like, let's just keep on going, man. That's it. They just show the whole world what we're about. This is crazy. All right. Sidebar container over here, right? Now, the sidebar has a few areas. It has a header, and then it has a few extra bits down here. These are all called sidebar option components. And we're going to go ahead and build them out. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that uh, today. Now, the sidebar header, right? So let's go ahead and focus on this header section over here. Okay? So um, what we're going to do now is create a sidebar header. I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, sidebar header. And then I need to create that. So I'm gonna say, const sidebar header equals a style div. Style div, there we go. And save, right? So now we have our sidebar header over here. Now inside, what goes inside the sidebar header? So I actually have two sections here. I have a left section, which I'm gonna to refer to as sidebar info, okay? And then I have, I'm gonna, inside of here, I'm gonna have a H2 and a H3. Okay, so over here, what I'm going to do is create another one called sidebar info. So I'm going to say sidebar info, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and create this. So then the quick way of doing this is boom. And then you can go ahead and rename this one to sidebar info, like so. Okay, now inside of here, I'm going to have a H2, which says uh, Papa Fam HQ. Okay, so this is going to refer to this bit over here. Now underneath that, I'm going to have a H3. And inside the H3, I'm going to firstly have this little drawing icon. Right, and this has actually got a weird name to it, right? It's called Fiber Manual Record Icon. Now, God knows why it's called that, but it is what it is, okay? <laughs> so it is what it is, right? And we're, all, we're literally climbing on those likes, guys. Let's keep it coming for Fiber Manual Icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that from Material UI like so. Perfect. Now, underneath, right, I'm gonna go ahead and have... Oh, dude, I think we just got Chris. Oh, welcome, Chris. Just join the uh, Papa Platinum, dude. Dude, welcome, man. Welcome to the Papa Fam. Guys, anyway, we got loads of members in the Papa Fam right now. Welcome, Christopher. He just jumped in. The sale is the first link in the description, guys. He joined, he made the right decision. Papa Platinum, welcome, dude. That's amazing. Right, so now we have the H3 over here. Dude, that just made me pumped up, man. Right, and then we're going to have the user's name. So in this case, what I'm going to say is I'm just going to say Sunny Sanger for now. And then when we log in, I'm actually going to pull that record from it. Okay. Jacob says, Sunny, you are my hero. Dude, you are my hero for watching. So thank you so much, man. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and import the sidebar into our app.js. So over here, I'm going to say app.js. And I'm going to go ahead and import this. Right. 
boom import save all right gonna go at fantana that's fire dude hell yeah man all right the fam grows man says oh you're right that's it dude we just keep on growing man all right so at this point how do we go ahead and get this to look the way we need it so we have the sidebar over here okay and what i want to just double check is that okay so firstly app body let's go ahead and style this in a way that we need to okay so i'm going to go ahead and first when we have the sidebar body i'm going to say this is display flex and it has a height of 100 view height okay because i want to use up the entire height save like so going to refresh and you can still you can't see anything right now okay and i'm going to fix that in just a second i think that might be because we haven't actually saved this properly there we go and you can see we, we will fix that in just a sec let's go back to app.js over here now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure right so we've got the sidebar here perfect from component sidebar and let's just double check right now we've got the papa fam like so it's most likely the color at this point so we'll go ahead and fix that out so i'm going to jump into my sidebar and when we have the sidebar container i'm going to style that one right now so sidebar container style div and this one is going to be a color white but the background color is going to be the slack color okay so the first thing we we'll do is say background color variable slack color and there you go right that's how we do it um looks fresh okay so uh Faizan, i will be dropping react native dude don't worry um right and expo you should be using expo dude if you are working on it until you need anything else but there we go color white there we go and then what i'm gonna say is a flex of 0.3 because i want the sidebar to only take up 30 percent. so here we're gonna say flex of 0.3 and then you can see now it's taking up 0.3 okay and then what I'm going to say is a border top of one pixel solid, right? And I'm going to say a margin top of 60 pixels. Now there is a little trick I've done here, okay? And what I've done here is I've actually gone ahead and made this fix. And there's a reason why, because later on I do this little cool trick. And now with a margin top of 60 pixels, it shows, okay? And there's a reason why, because if you notice in the final build, if we have a, a long bit of text, right? And we do this, say hello world. Let's just type in hello world. You see how it scrolls down? It's a little trick that we're doing to keep the top where it is, okay? So thank you so much. Great energy. Appreciate it, dude. So let's carry on. So at this point, let's keep going. And we're going to have a bunch of horizontal rows, and we're going to target that in a sec, but we'll leave it for now. So at this point, how do I get this to look like this? Okay, because they definitely don't look like that right now. Um, what we need to do is I'm going to go ahead and firstly... Next to the sidebar info, I'm going to get that icon. So it's called the create icon and we need to import that from material UI. So I need to go to the top and say import create icon from material UI save. Now refresh and we should be able to see the little pencil. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this um, look in the exact way we need to like this one over here because that looks clean. That looks ugly. Okay, we want to make it look a lot better. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, let me turn my mic gain down. There we go. I'm going to say sidebar container. And we've already started this one out. The next one we're going to do is sidebar header. Okay, so for the sidebar header, I'm going to simply go ahead and jump over to my, my start component. Where is it? Down here. And I'm going to give this one the following. We'll say display flex. And it's going to have a border bottom. So let me go ahead and just grab this. I'm going to say display flex, border bottom, padding bottom, and a padding around it. Okay. There we go. Let's just chuck that in. And this actually eradicates this one. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. And you can see now it's somewhat got a similar structure, but the text isn't the same, okay? Now we have an icon here, this one, right? Now display flex made it into a row, which is why this is now on the right of this, okay? If you guys know Peter McKinnon, you'll know where this song is about, right? This is where it's about, it's where it's from. Um, so I'm gonna do material UI SVG. So I'm gonna target the inner material UI icon. And then in here, I'm going to give this icon a padding of eight pixels, a color, a font size, a border radius. So it has a nice little circle behind it and a background color of white. And we should, with these rules, get it to look like this. Let's go ahead and give that a try. Boom. Save. Kapow. There we go. Looks good, right? I like that. I think that looks really nice. The next thing I want to do is we have sidebar info. Now, sidebar info is this bit. I want this to essentially look like this. Okay. So let's go ahead and make it that way okay so we will have redux inside of zero to full stack hero dude so we have a sale on right now first link in the description make sure you you capitalize on that because it's gonna the doors are gonna close after that man i can't i can't even say it enough all right so i'm gonna go over to the sidebar info 
and I'm gonna style this one. I'm gonna say flex one, right? Flex on that bitch. And then here I'm gonna say H2. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say here, I want a font size of 15 pixels, font weight of 900 and a margin bottom of five pixels. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Save. All right, so uh, Faizan, dude, again, I do warn everyone, man. I do warn everyone to say, like, don't spam. David says, Sonny, can you include things like Formic? Yes, I actually did do that inside of my Gmail clone. Um, so you can check. Not did I didn't use Formic, but I used, um, I used React Hooks Form, which has validation inside of it. So if you're interested in that, dude, uh, David, check out my Gmail clone, the original Gmail clone. <laughs> Shut all right, this guy say H3. I don't care. I built that shit. This guy say display flex. And then what we're going to do is say font size 13, font size 13. Um, and I'm going to say font weight to 400 align item center, right? So let's go ahead and do this. Boom. There we go. Save. And then, oh, Melbourne's in the house. What's up, babe? My gorgeous girlfriend's in the house. And yeah, I actually had a bad issue, but we're back now, okay? So I'm going to target. This is a thing that I like, by the way. So I have a H3 tag. And if you see over here, I have a H3. And inside of it, I have that material UI icon, okay? So usually you have to do some janky, weird stuff in CSS, right? But this is pretty clean. Taran, please don't spam, dude. All right, so here what I'm going to say is target the H3. See you later, Gwen. And I'm going to target the material UI SVG root icon. Go ahead and grab that. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and have the font size. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and font size 14, margin top one pixel, margin right two pixels, and a color of green. And you'll notice that this will suddenly change into a beautiful looking icon. And it will have that sort of, you know, that signed in look and feel to it. Okay, so that's exactly what I wanted right there. Right now, if you notice, look at that. Looks pretty damn good to me. Okay. Now, the reason why this is a little bit different is because we have this chat component on the right, but we will get there. Okay, we're going to get to that point. Guys, let's hit 400 likes. If you're watching right now and you haven't smashed the thumbs up button, smash it because it's going to help this video get to as many people as possible. And with that said, quick war break. What's up, Rishi? He's watching on um, Rishi Lola, 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 Lola. Sorry, dude, I always get that wrong. Uh, he's watching on Twitch. Let's carry on. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and have over here, we had the create icon. So the sidebar header is essentially complete. Okay, so we have the header, which is essentially complete. Now down here, we're going to have a reusable component and we're going to call this one this sidebar option. Okay, so sidebar option. So I already have my coffee. Thank you so much, dude. Um, so sidebar option. So I'm going to go ahead and create that right now. So I'm going to open up my code, go into my components folder. And you can see it's starting to look pretty clean. Okay, let's say sidebar option.js. Right, I'm gonna hide that RFCE. Boom. Right, let's go ahead. Whoa, Nigerian in the house. What's up, man? And then here again, you can see like you start getting into a flow of it, right? I'm gonna say const sidebar option container. I'm gonna say equals style div, right? Style div. And you just wanna go ahead and get, you know, like that muscle memory up. I always say like it's not, you don't have to be the best coder. You just need to get that pattern recognition and you slowly figure things out, guys. I don't remember everything off the top of my head. I don't think, I don't I really don't expect any developer to, but you want to go ahead and make sure you just take the time to ingrain that muscle memory. Okay. Like, cause it does make a difference. Okay. It's very important. Um, practice will lead to that. Okay. So at this point we have our sidebar over here. Now, what we're going to do is have a bunch of these sidebars. Now these are going to have two props. Okay. I want to pass in a prop, which is the icon itself. And I want to pass in the title which is going to be like this. So the title mentions and reactions and so forth and each individual icon. Now, what I've actually done here is I'll show you how I want this to look. So let's assume I had all of these right in so inside my code. So just to save some time, I've actually gone ahead and imported those already. Now in React, you can have each component can take props, right? Now props are properties. They allow, um, Dax says, is this going to be recorded? Yes, dude, it's going to be recorded. Um, and it will allow a component to render with slight differences based on the properties that you pass in. Okay. So at this point, let's go ahead and paste, right? So I've got this right here and you guys can see that we've just got a bunch of these and each one is getting a different icon and it's getting a different title. Now I will show you how to consume that in just a sec, but let's go ahead and first import all of those icons as necessary. Okay. So it's going to be from the to all the way to expand. 
All right. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a bunch of icons and import them. Okay. So you can pause the video there, watch it if you need to get those icons. Now at this point, what we should see is sidebar option is not defined. Okay. So obviously it makes sense, All right? We need to go to sidebar option, hit save, and then I need to go to sidebar and go ahead and do my little, go to the end of the component control space bar. And there we go. And they'll see the second one, it says source component sidebar option that actually does an auto import trick. Okay. Ayman says fire bro. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate you watching. Let's go ahead and do that. Now you can see, look, it loads, right? Now nothing's on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and make sure something actually shows up on the screen. Okay. Guys, just hit 400 likes. Come on. We can do it. I know it. We can keep pushing this stuff. Right? So what we're going to do is we have the icon then we have the title thread. So in this case, what I want to do here is I want to actually consume this as something called props, like I mentioned before. So props comes through as a simple function argument. Okay. So at this point, what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to destructure, which means I'm essentially going to go ahead and tear apart, right? I'm going to basically go ahead and tear apart the object. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pull apart the object at this point. I'm going to pull the icon out and the title. This is called destructuring. Okay. Uh, Robert, there is actually all the code inside the GitHub repo, um, but we need to kind of move a little fast on this one. So uh, let's carry on, dude. So at this point, um, rather than sidebar container, a sidebar option, actually that's, for, that's good. We can keep it as that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. All right. So now at this point, what I'm also going to do is, there we go. That's fine. Actually, we've got icon and title. So you can see we're actually passing in a whole icon here, right? So, and the rest of the reason why this is a capital I, not a lowercase I, because we're going to be rendering it on the screen in just a sec. Now inside of here, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a few things in there. So I'm going to say, okay, if you passed in an icon, right? So we're going to protect ourselves. Then I'm going to render the icon out. Okay. So self-closing component and all of these icons and material UI take a font size and then we can give that a font size of small. Okay. Now here, I'm actually going to give it an inline style because it's a bit hard to do a, uh, a styled component in that use case. So we're going to say, just give it a padding of 10 for each of these. Right? So there we go. Now at this point, you can see all the icons have just popped in. So it's looking pretty good at this point. Right? So, and the reason why I put icon and, and is because you might actually render the component now without passing in an icon. Okay. So the second thing I'm going to say is, okay, if you pass the icon, then what I'm going to say is I'm going to go ahead and render a h3 which has the title okay so here i'm going to say okay jsx with the squiggly brackets i'm going to say title like this and here is we're using a ternary operator so this basically means if if icon is truthy so if it's true or if it has a value inside of it render this out otherwise render out whatever in this side of in this parentheses so at this point what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and create a sidebar option channel um div okay so this is actually going to be a styled component and I'm going to create this over here. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go ahead and grab this line. And then I'm also going to go ahead and boom. There we go. Cyber option channel. There we go. Now at this point we have this div style div there, and I'm just going to span a hashtag here, right? I'm going to span a hashtag and I'm going to have the title over here. And there's a reason why we're doing this now it'll make a lot of sense in just a sec. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save code with Yug says awesome build. Please call out my name. Yeah, I got you did guys, 180 people watching. This is huge right now. We actually have 200 across all the platforms. Smash that thumbs up button, please. If you're enjoying this, because it's going to help the video help more people. And that's what we do in the Papa fam. If you're interested in joining first link in the description, sale ends in two days and I'm closing the doors for that. Yeah, that's how it is. Abhishek, what's up, dude? All right. So at this point, you can see, look, this is how it's looking, right? I don't want it to look like this. I want it to look a little bit cleaner than this. So how do I style it to look in that way? So I'm going to go to the sidebar option container. And the first thing we'll say is display flex. Now I do want to see my code. So I'm going to go ahead and make it like this. I'm going to say display flex. Okay. Save. And you can see everything goes into a row. Okay. Hey, Mevan's here. She goes, yes, guys. Well done, Sunny. Sunny, let's go for food after. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I, oh God, the headache this gave me, Mevan called me up and I gave her, I was a bit grumpy because, uh, you know, the, the, the stream cut, but thank you, babe, for always sticking in. All right. So at this point, I'm going to say display flex font size of 12 pixels. And then I'm going to say align items center. Okay. Align item center padding left of two pixels. So padding left of two pixels. Right, so two pixels like this. And then I'm going to say a cursor pointer because I want all of these to be like somewhat sort of as you hover over it, 
right? You can say sorry, I'm sorry, okay? <laughs> there we go. I'm sorry for being grumpy. Papa React is kind of grumpy at times, guys. So there you go, All right? And we're gonna say, okay, when I hover over it, I wanna change the opacity, right? So in order to do that, what I do is, <laughs> I, I, that's it. Now, now she's taking the mic. All right. So opacity 0.9. I'm going to change the background color when I hover over it. Okay. So let's go ahead and refresh. And then you see that, guys. Look at that. Fresh. Okay. Look at that. Looks good. Looks pretty clean. Now you can see over here. Look, we're almost there. Right? It's looking pretty good at this point. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target the H3. Right. Now the H3 sits over here. Okay. So in order to grab it, again, styled components makes this so easy. We can say H3, grab it. And I'm gonna say a font weight because I wanna reduce the boldness of that text. I'm gonna say it should be a 500 sort of weight, okay? So 500 is somewhat of an average weight. You can see it drops the font size a little bit more, okay? So after we've done a H3, I'm gonna jump into the H3 and, the, and I'm gonna jump into a span tag. And as you can remember, over here, we had a span for the hashtag. There's a reason why I span the hashtag. It's because I only wanna style the that one hashtag, right? I just want to go ahead and, uh, and do that. All right, so uh, now I see uh, Augustine says, wow, the engine in this platform is mad. Exactly, dude, that's what we're about, honestly. It's just, you know, we just have fun here, man. Padding of 15 pixels, okay? That's it. And uh, and we code, right? We code properly, that's how we do it, right? So look at that, that looks clean, man. Right, I like that, that looks pretty good. So at this point, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back up to my code and now we have this reusable component okay so it looks pretty good at this point um what was very useful about this is that we actually made it so that if we don't pass an icon in we can just use the we can just render out a title now why is that handy because if you wanted to have it like you can pretty much have it as just like channels without an icon so it's a, it's a nice way of doing it okay so what we can do is i'm going to go back to sidebar and over here so i'm going to go ahead and make that a bit smaller so you guys can see it there we go over here, what I'm gonna say is where we have sidebar option. Michael, what's up, dude? Michael actually won uh, a prize inside of, um, I think it was a second place, Michael. So congrats, dude, inside of the Netflix challenge. Absolutely smashed it, dude. So here I'm gonna drop horizontal lines, okay? So you see over in this build, we have the horizontal lines coming in clutch over here and here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over in our build, okay? So I'm gonna say horizontal line, and then you can see over here, it just looks pretty ugly at that point, but we'll style it, right? We'll make it a little better. And then I'm gonna have another sidebar option. Okay, so I don't know why that jumped over there. I'm gonna have another sidebar option with the expand more icon and the title is gonna be channels. And this is what the beauty, right? This is the real beauty of the, um, this is the beauty of style components, of reusable components, okay? And style components, I guess, because we're using both of them. But it's really, really clean because reusable components, like if you do them well, you can code so fast, right? Because you don't have to repeat yourself. It also makes it a lot easier to maintain your code base, okay? So this is really good. Guys, come on, almost at 400 likes, let's go, All right? So I'm gonna drop another horizontal row over here. So boom, we should have another line. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have an add icon channel, right? So here I'm gonna have another add icon. And this has another prop called add channel option. Okay, and I'll show you what we do with that one in just a sec. But if I go ahead and save that now, it's gonna freak out because we didn't import add icon. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull in add icon from material UI like so, save. And then what I'm gonna do is refresh. And you can see that the go here would be, all of these buttons are actually clickable, right? So I can click them and all that sort of stuff. And then this one, if I click it, it says, please enter a channel name. So we want some functionality behind it. How do I determine when to sort of pop this up? I pass another prop and you guessed it, that prop is gonna be the add channel option. So if I go over to sidebar option, I'm gonna pull that in as a prop. Okay, and we'll sort of set that up in just a sec, okay? Perfect. Now at this point, right, we have the channels over here and then we have the final bit underneath. Now the last bit is actually the channels which render out. So if I was to go ahead and add a channel saying, um, uh, let's just say, let's just say pop fam, right? Just to say pop fam. Okay. And you can see look, uh, a channel came in here. So this one, we need to go ahead and actually sort of set up with a database behind it. Okay, so this is actually sort of, uh, oh, nice. This is this guy's common energy from Twitch, nice. Um, yeah, so you can you can see this is gonna be set up to a database. We're gonna go ahead and configure that in just a sec. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and style out the HR, right? So I'm gonna go into my sidebar over here and I'm gonna go ahead and say styled bar, oh, sorry, sidebar container. 
and I'm going to target the horizontal row which is that line and I'm going to give it a margin top 10 pixels margin bottom and a border of one pixel solid and it's got a nice little color to it you guys will see in just a sec boom there we go very subtle okay very very subtle stuff and then what we're going to do is the we've already done the header we've already done that blah 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 nice that actually looks pretty damn good okay so at this point if I go ahead and show you guys look at this that's pretty damn close right so we're looking pretty good at this point okay now what we want to do is i actually want to firstly create these rooms okay so how do we create the rooms right so oh nice london uk oh shit i'm in london dude all right so uh let's go ahead and say at this point boom just go ahead and pop this halfway pop this halfway nice okay so inside of sidebar option what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna have a ad channel now what's really cool here is that i'm gonna basically have it so that if you click on this one you add a channel but if you click on this one you're selecting a channel okay so in this case if i if i click on this one it selects the channel okay it takes a little second because the internet's a bit slow but if i go ahead and for example add a channel how do i do that right how do i make it sort of dependent on on that sort of thing so the way i do that is i go ahead let me just make this small for a sec um and then we make this a bit bigger so we go ahead we take our add channel option prop now we go to our sidebar option container and what i simply do is i say okay attach an on click right uh but if i have add channel option passed as a prop i'm gonna trigger off the add channel function which we need to write or if that's actually not there and we don't actually see this prop in there or it's fossey so which means it's not got a value behind it i'm going to select a channel instead now these two functions i need to create add channel and select channel okay so almost at 400 likes guys smash the thumbs up button we're almost almost there okay now at this point i'm going to create two functions i'm going to create one which is const add channel and this is going to be an anonymous function i'm going to do the same thing for select channel i'm going to say const select channel boom an anonymous function like so that's it right we've got two two different functions over there and uh yeah you shouldn't have any errors inside your code at this point right everything should be looking good 400 likes literally one like away come on guys let's do it literally we're almost up flipping 500 likes and we literally lost 200 from a technical glitch that's what i'm talking about guys thank you so much we just hit 400 likes incredible stuff incredible incredible stuff that's what the pop fan is about just want to say one more time sale ends in two days to join the pop fam god damn guys don't miss out first link in the description christopher made the choice today to join us and he will not regret it dude that's what i'm talking about i love how you know you wait for that one like and then it's like boom 10 likes <laughs> right that's what i'm talking about that's the kind of energy we need dude like where was those where were those people they're just like waiting on standby like i'm gonna i'm gonna be that person that gets one and then everyone decides to jump and it's like boom you know how it is All right All right let's carry on guys so at this point we have got the ad channel okay so for the ad channel we're gonna do a few cool things so now what i need to do is set up firebase okay so i'm gonna go over to my files earlier remember we added in the firebase configuration okay so what i actually need to do is command j pull out my terminal i'm gonna say yarn add firebase All right so yarn because we're gonna install firebase into our project now while it's doing that i can go over here and i can say import firebase from firebase Mahmed says hey sonny great work man thank you so much dude uh Shrika, let's do it dude let's get to 500 i think we can do it All right now what we're gonna say is while that's installing i already know it right we're gonna say firebase app equals firebase which is our package we just installed dot initialize app and the way you set up the app and basically what this is doing is it connects the the front end that we're building right now to firebase so firebase is the thing that's powering everything it's google's sort of back-end servers and basically right now it's an initialized app is going to take that configuration and connect these two things together all right and it makes everything work in the way we expect so here i'm going to say firebase config okay and then i'm going to go ahead and say const db because i need access to the database now what database am i referring to guys you might be wondering so i'm going to go over to my firebase i'm going to go into over here and i'm going to say cloud firestore okay so cloud firestore over here victor uh Nublian says you deserve 1 million for subscribers dude we're not going to stop until we get there so i'm telling you just keep on going right next right now let's go ahead and hit 500 likes that's the sort of you know we celebrate all this morning you want to click on create database start in test mode click next here you want to click name enable that's fine all good all right so once that's done 
this will go ahead and set up Firestore, right? Firestore is a real-time database. Now, it's so powerful, it's real-time, which means as messages come through, it'll be so easy to implement. We're gonna go ahead and do it really nicely right now, okay? So, it says, cannot enable after you set it, but, oh, interesting. Let's have a look why. I might actually have to use, if it if it can't enable it, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and use a different account. That's completely cool. All right, so setting up security rules. Let's have a look. Okay, it, it did it. So if you get that error, just go ahead and do it. All right. So at this point, what I'm going to do is, uh, and guys, this is not a gossip channel, dude. So please don't. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and this is basically a NoSQL structure, right? Now, what does a NoSQL structure look like, right? NoSQL pretty much has this structure of collection, right? And a collection can have several documents. Okay. So it'll have several documents. Now, if you don't know about this stuff, I really recommend you look into what NoSQL databases are like. And then after a document, like you'll have several documents. So imagine our collection was, let's say, rooms, right? So chat rooms, okay? Every single document would represent a, a different room, like a different chat room, okay? Now, each room will have its own collections. You see, it takes a collection document collection structure. So this one would be a collection. And then in here, you would have a collection of messages, right? So this one would be like, for example, it would be a collection of messages. And then this would lead to a, literally again, so it would take, it lead to all the messages in the form of document, like documents, okay? So here you would have all the different messages for this chat room. So you see, you have a collection of rooms, the rooms themselves, each room will have a, its own collection of messages. And then these will be rendered out as documents. Okay, so that's how it kind of works when you're using NoSQL, okay? so. At this point, what we're gonna do, Black Knight says, just finished the Netflix day three challenge and came here for the new build. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Coming in clutch, man. So at this point, we've got the database. How do I access it? Okay, I say Firebase app. I basically grab this, paste it, cause I'm lazy. And then I say dot Firestore, right? No, no, I don't. I say Firebase app. Yeah, dot Firestore, yeah, I do. Almost got lost there, right? And then I'm gonna say const auth because we have a sign in in this app. So I'm gonna say Firebase.auth. And this is how we do it. Now, how do I get Google authentication, right? What I do is I add in something called a provider. Now, all you need to do is add in this line right here. And what this does is it gets the Google authentication provider, which is that nice little pop-up ready for us, okay? So what I do now is I go over to my Firebase and I go to authentication, the tab over here, click it. All right, this is insane, right? This is what I'm saying, guys. That honestly, like the power of the Papa fan, we have literally uh, 170 people watching across different platforms right now, and we have 421 likes. Like, that's just that just shows you how powerful this damn community is, right? Like, it's incredible. Like, I don't see any other channel doing this right now. Authentication, click, get started, and then here, very simple to get this up and running, okay? What you want to do is you want to go to Google, hit this button, enable, and then you want to click on a project support email, save. That's how you enable Google authentication, guys. It's literally that simple, I promise you. And it's even easier now because we're using Firebase hooks and they're gonna be your best friend. I swear to God, guys, let's hit 500 likes. Come on, it's gonna be so fun. All right, so we've got this right up now running. Okay, so this looks pretty good. And what I'm gonna do now is I need to export this stuff so that we can use it outside. So I'm gonna say export and I'm going to export it explicitly. I'm going to say export the, the authentication, the provider, and the DB. This means that I can access the DB from anywhere. I can access the authentication and I can access a little pop-up anywhere, okay? So this is going to be uh, really important. Work says, I learn more from Sunny than in university. Dude, that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I want to do, you know? That's my mission, to just drive value, right? Let's get this energy back up. Quick water break. If you guys are having a water break, then uh, join me right now. And let's, let's have it together. <laughs> so, it sounded weird, but you know. All right. Change the lighting a little bit. Change a little tempo to this, right? Let's carry on, guys. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and jump into our sidebar option. Okay. Say to G, say to G, tea break for access. Nice. Red Bull break. Oh, I don't know. It's dangerous for me, dude. Six o'clock. My, I do want to sleep tonight. <laughs> All right, so at this point, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually add in. So firstly, we're going to do the add channel. Now, how do we add a channel to that database structure that I showed you earlier? Before we actually do that, I want to innate, I want to show you guys a little trick, okay? So if you go to rules over here, now don't do this in production environments. This is only for demos or something on your portfolio that don't really matter. But I'm going to make it so that anyone can read and write to this database. You shouldn't do that for production, okay? If you should only have it, and I'm not going to go into the security, 
security rules right now, but it's very important that you don't do that in production environments. So let's go ahead and go back to data. So how do I go ahead and add rooms, right? So what rooms am I talking about exactly? I'm talking about these rooms. So like YouTube, Papa Fam, Papa. How do you get all these different channels, right? And eventually, if you guys stick it to the end, you will be able to actually go ahead and, and jump onto the chat and we can all have a chat through the app, which would be pretty cool, okay? Fantana says, still in love with that water bottle. Honestly, dude, I love this water bottle. <laughs> I have so many of these. Um, so I'm gonna say add channel. And then here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say const channel name. And how do I get the channel name, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say prompt. Okay, so I'm actually gonna prompt the user and that's actually built in. So we can say, please enter the channel name, right? So please enter the channel name, okay? Now, what you wanna do is whenever you prompt the user, you need to protect against the empty. So some people might go ahead and prompt, but then go ahead and uh, enter it without a value, right? You wanna protect against that. Uh, this is a pre this is a more upgraded version of the previous Slack clone, yes. So here we say if, and then we say channel name. Right, if channel name and if the channel name has a value, then we access the database because basically remember that Firebase that we the configuration that we set up earlier and then we exported it. So I'm gonna pull in my database and I'm just gonna say and I'm importing it from our local Firebase file. I'm gonna say db dot collection and the collection is gonna be the rooms. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a room, okay. Finha, thank you so much, dude. I'm gonna add a room and they're basically adding a room. So it's very simple. You add an object, right? You just simply go ahead and pop in. The name of this room is gonna be the channel name that I just collected from the prompt. Now let's go ahead and see this in action over on the other one. So if we go ahead and say add a channel and here you can see if I say like, uh, let's just say uh, coding, enter. And you can see coding, right? So how do I go ahead and do that? So I'm gonna say channel name and hit save. Now on our build over here, if I go ahead and hit add channel, and I need to refresh most likely. And what we actually need to do is in sidebar, add channel option, I passed it through. We pass it in over here, there we go. And if I go ahead and click add channel now, please enter the channel name. So if I say ABC, Emerson says most friendly guy ever. Thank you so much guys. Uh, well, it's literally nearly at 450 likes, let's go man. Let's get, okay, perfect. Okay, so it worked in the way we expected it to, but nothing really happened, all right? Citeja says, Sunny, I got five jobs. Wow, oh my God, dude. Just send me proof of that, please. <laughs> send me proof on my Instagram. I don't know what it is. I love this damn song, man. All right. So now we pretty much go ahead and have a nice little prompt at this point, okay? All right. So 450 likes. Let's go, man. Oh, my God. This channel is insane. Honestly, let's go. All right. So this will go ahead and add it. Now, I actually just went ahead and tried that out. So let's see if it added it to the database. So I'm going to hit refresh on the Cloud Firestore database. We should see rooms rooms there we go and we see abc that was the room that we just created right awesome stuff so we actually went ahead and pushed it into our back end okay so that looks really really nice at this point in time now how do i actually go ahead and then list them out on the sidebar though right so it's all fair well that we add them but how do i actually use them now previously we had to use some kind of janky use effect and if you've ever seen any of my builds it was kind of a headache to do that okay so instead what we're going to be doing now because what i want to do is i want to have a real-time listener to that database which will allow me to basically pull this in in a real-time fashion okay so what i'm going to do here is uh oh nice haha <laughs> you shazammed it thank you dude so what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to go ahead and say um firebase hooks and save and you can see react firebase hooks right you're going to click the first link and all you need to do to get this up and running you guys can feel free to read that documentation but all i'm going to do is go ahead and command j yarn add react firebase hooks so i'm going to install this okay and this is the one that you want to install now they have a really great documentation there and here's the sort of useful links that show you how to use each one so the authentication hooks cloud fires to hooks but you guys are going to see the absolute crazy power okay you're gonna see honestly the crazy power of this right now. So it's already installed, so we hit Command J to hide it. And now what we do is we go to the top of our file where we typically would have, you know, defined some state, right? But what we do here is we say const. We want the channels from Firestore, okay. So Sonny, I don't really see what you're doing here. So we're gonna get the channels. And what's actually even better, we can get the loading state, even when it's loading. And if there's an error, we can actually get the error state. All right, so this is getting, this is kind of getting powerful, Sonny. What are you doing here, right? And then here we say equals use collection. Okay, use collection. And some of you watching, like I'm listening. I'm kind of listening, where's this happening? 
And let's go ahead and import that, right, from the React Firebase hooks. And then how do we go ahead and access the collection? So I'm actually going to go ahead and access this collection right now. And I'm trying to get the channels, right, which is actually the rooms, right? So in this case, the, the, the naming's a bit off, but that's what we're referring to. Madhu says, you have a lot of energy, man. Thank you so much, dude. You guys give me that energy. And here, what I do is I say DB, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pull in my DB, which I already have. And I'm going to say DB.collection. And I'm just going to point to the rooms. And you better goddamn believe it, that that is it. Now, in channels, I have the collections. So if I go ahead and I just say, let's just do a console log of channels here. And I go ahead and, and I do F command F12 to show this. Look at this, guys. That is actually, that is actually the uh, the channels right there. So if I do docs, an array of one, and it looks all weird right now, but I'll show you that I'll prove to you that that is actually what we're looking for, right? So this is in, this is incredible, right? This is really, really incredible. Uh, Finha says, it's been an hour. You're nearly finished yet. You went at a pace that made me understand. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, man. Honestly, like I really appreciate the kind words. Um, Surrender, recognize me, bro. All right, so let's carry on. Um, um, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead, get rid of that console log. And I'm going to go ahead and say, so we have the channels over there, right? Now I want to loop through them and show them as sidebar options. Okay, so how do I do that? What I want to do is each actual sort of room has an ID as well. So I will be passing that in as, an, as an another additional prop to my sidebar option. But what I need to do here is go back to sidebar and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say, okay, go into the channels, right? Go into the docs and remember channels can be undefined in the beginning. So we're going to protect it with something called optional chaining, right? Then we say dot, right? How are you using React just without having Stack Overflow on the next page? Real programmer, respect. Thank you, dude. Honestly, just practice. Takes lots of practice and uh, my course, right? Honestly, take it. You understand React inside out, right? Uh, there's a sale on, by the way, guys. Two days left. First link in description. Check it out if you're interested. Right here, we're going to say uh, channels.docs.map, okay? Uh, so ODSCs, I'm sorry, I didn't pronounce it right, but through them, yes, I'm going to map through them, dude. So I'm going to go ahead and say map through each one and each of the documents. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and return something. So what I want to do is I want to return through this entire list and basically render out a sidebar option. So I'm going to go ahead and pop a sidebar option. Now, obviously, I don't want this one. I actually just want the, I don't want the icon here. What I want instead is I want to say, okay, the title should be the doc dot data so i'm going to access the data which is this data inside of a document and i'm going to say dot name which was actually the name that i gave it here so dot name right so a little typo dot name okay so that's the first thing now whenever you have a map inside of react you should always provide a key right now keys are very important because it tells react that you do not need to re-render that entire list if something gets added in because let's say it rendered a thousand elements in the list and you only want to you only add in one extra sort of element to that list because every single one has a different key. Now React knows, oh, wait a sec, you only added something at the bottom. The other 52 that you added before don't need to be re-rendered. So it makes it a lot more efficient. OK, so here I say the key is dot dot doc ID. Right. And the document ID is going to be this one. So at this point, what can I do? I can say, actually, I'm going to pass through an ID, which is going to be the doctor ID because I actually need this ID as a prop and I'll show you why. Okay. I'll show you exactly why channels is not defined. That's because, um, oh, wait a sec in sidebar options. Um, oh, I've done it in the wrong room. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this needs to be in sidebar. My bad. So this should be in sidebar right now. There we go in sidebar. And then this means that the use collection should also be in sidebar. Okay. So this one should also be in here, which means we also need to import DB. So make sure you just follow me with that one. That's a slight little change. It should be in sidebar. Okay. Harpery, what's up, man? Good to see you, bro. Uh, that's my brother-in-law's. That's just, this is my brother in the house. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then here we're going to say channels. There we go. And you got the channels. It says channels is not defined, but if we save now and we refresh, should be good. All right. So now you can see like the channels, but, ah, there we go, guys. ABC. There we go. Look at that. Works, right? I mean, it looks like trash, but we'll make it look nice. Um, so at this point, like it does not look great, but we're going to make that look a little bit better, right? We're going to make that look very clean in the end. Okay. So how do I get this to look in the way that I have option? So I'm heading over to sidebar option. I'm passing through the ID. 
Okay, so make sure you don't forget that step is very important. Now inside a sidebar option, okay? Uh, that's it, Harps is in the house, man. So what we're gonna do is where we have the H3. Okay, so this is gonna be the sidebar option channel. So we need to style sidebar option channel, which is why it looks like trash right now. So I'm gonna go over to sidebar option channel and where is it at? Sidebar option channel, there we go, okay. So this is gonna be a, this is not gonna be a div, this is gonna be a H3. Okay, because this is gonna be an, a sort of H3. So you see what we're doing there, it's really good, right? Akshat says, hey son, you just joined, you are amazing. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, Hardik says, you are on fire. Thank you, man. We're literally about to break 500 likes. Come on, guys, just keep on going. It's so, so cool. And I love how everyone chats to each other and starts to get to know each other. So nice. All right, so here I'm gonna say padding of 10 pixels by zero. So 10 pixels by zero, I'm gonna say a font weight of 300. Whoa, check out Anshu Singh. He says, I have landed a 100K job. Thank you. That's set, man. That's what we do. That's what we do. All right. If you if the room collection has only an ID, how did you extract channels? Um, no, so it doesn't have an ID. It is, these are the channels. This is going to be like a doc. These are all channels of so the room. All of these documents would be the channels. And then the doc.data would be the data inside of each one. Okay. So let's go ahead and save. And then you see guys, that looks pretty clean. Okay, but you see, look at that. Oh, it shouldn't be triggering. It should only be triggering on the ABC. It, should, it shouldn't be triggering on this one, right? So we've got a problem there. So the problem there is we've got add channel option. But what we need to actually do is say, select channel. Okay. So at this point, what we need to do is say, well, we have select channel. So now what I'm gonna do is, firstly, this should, this is, oh, oops, if we go to sidebar, we don't need the add channel option here. We don't want that. We refresh and you should have it so that only the add channel makes the pop-up come up. If you click this one, it shouldn't make it pop up because what we actually wanna do is trigger off the select channel function, okay? So there we go, All right? So now what I'm gonna do is, um, Curious says, uh, so uh, this is a much more upgraded Slack clone. So this has style components, Redux and Firebase hooks. So hell of a lot more, right? Um, all right, let's carry on guys. So select channel. So inside the select channel, what I'm gonna do is this is where I'm gonna use Redux. So what I wanna do is every time we select a room, I wanna push the ID into my Redux, right? Now what is Redux, right? Redux is like a global store. So Think of our application where every single component has state, which is like some kind of memory inside of it, right? Now, if I need some memory to exist and kind of float around my entire app and I just need to pull it when I need to, Redux is basically, it's gonna solve that problem for us. It's gonna act as something like a global store. It's gonna be like a global place where we can access and store variables. Now, how do we push data into Redux? We dispatch something called an action, which allows us to manipulate the sort of data that which lies inside of the Redux slices. Now, what we do is in today's build, we're only gonna have one slice, which is just gonna to refer to all the app contents, but you can actually divide that global store up in things that make sense. Let's say you're at an e-commerce site, you could have a basket slice, a user slice and all that cool stuff, okay? So a lot, a lot to learn here and it's gonna be a lot of fun, okay? So what we're gonna do now is actually prepare Redux and uh, it's gonna be a lot simpler than you think, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into that. So I'm gonna go over to my code and I'm gonna go ahead and say, well, we have, oh, Anshul Singh, thank you so much, dude. Uh, it does not matter if it's a, he says it's a small donation, but dude, any donation is massively appreciated. Thank you so much. So here we have, um, <laughs> Hearts is chatting away to everyone. Here we go in app store.js. So I want to rename this to not be the counter reducer. I'm going to rename all of these things to become app reducer. So I'm going to have one kind of global store inside of this build, but typically you should spread it out based on like, you know, what's in the basket, what's in the sort of user information, that sort of stuff. So at this point, I need to go to my, um, I need to go to my features. Click that and I'm gonna rename counter slice to become app slice, All right? App slice, there we go, All right? Perfect, now I'm gonna jump into app slice and over here, what I need to do is I need to start renaming this. So I'm gonna rename these two things to become app and then I'm gonna go here and this is actually gonna become room ID. This is the initial state of that global store. Right now I just have a room ID which by default in the beginning is gonna be no. It's not gonna have a value, okay? Um, 
Right, so please don't spam, dude. Um, you're going to get blocked. So sorry about that, dude. Um, so at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, let's go down here. I'm going to get rid of this increment async. There we go. Boom. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually change this up a little bit. So where we have features down here, I'm going to change this to have a, sort of an action. And let's think about what is the action when we click that button? We kind of want to enter the room. Okay. And by entering the room, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the ID. Okay. I'm going to take the ID of the sort of the, the sidebar option that I just clicked. So the room, I'm going to get that ID and basically push it into the store with the enter room action. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to get rid of these two actions. We don't need them right now. Okay. And every single action inside this reducers section is these are the actions. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this comment. And all we're going to do here is essentially go ahead and have, I don't know why my kite just opened up strange. Um, so I'm going to, Oh, hoo, we just hit 500 likes. Thank you so much, guys. That's incredible, man. 181 people watching. We have 500 likes on this. Let's hit 600. Now let's keep on going, man. That is insane. Let's keep on going. So, so cool, honestly. And the fact that we had a cutout with the tech issue doesn't stop us, man. Like we have the whole video up after this build is finished. It's going to be perfect. You know, we don't let this stuff ruin us. And guys, as I said before, there's a two day sale left, right? You have two days to capitalize on that sale. First link in the description. Christopher made the right choice today, jumped in. But anyway, guys, congrats. We hit 500. Let's keep on going. All right. So for the enter room action, okay, so we're going to say enter room is going to be our action. And this one is going to have, it, whenever you dispatch an action, you get the state and you get the action itself. Now this will make a lot of sense later, but what we want to do is whenever we just get that action inside of our state, we're going to say change the room ID to whatever the action.payload.room ID is. Okay. And this will make a lot of sense once we go ahead and break this down. And again, Redux can be scary, guys. It can be scary, but don't freak out about it. We're going to break it down. It will make a lot of sense. Okay. Abdul says, I was the one who did the 500. Can I get a shout out? There you go, dude. All right. So we need to export this so that way we can use it outside. So firstly, we're going to change counter to app slice. We're going to go here to get rid of these and we're going to make it enter room. So now that way we can use this enter room outside of the uh, app slice component as in function. Okay. So these are called selectors now. And so once we push a value into the global store, how do I basically remember I said you dispatch an action, which goes ahead and changes a bit of the store. How do I now grab that bit of data, the room ID from the global store, right? We have something called a selector. Selectors are really important. You need to learn them. And this is how you write a selector. So we're going to say select room ID. Oops, select room ID. So select room ID. And this will have the state. It will have access to the state. And it, says it goes into state dot app. I mean, it's defined by app because this is the app slice. And then here we're going to say state dot app dot room ID. All right, perfect. And we just got 20 likes. Insane stuff, dude. Honestly, crazy, crazy stuff. All right. Um, so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and say export default app slice. There we go. Okay. App slice dot reducer. Now everything should be clean here, right? So if we hit save and we go back to our application and let's go ahead and see no errors. That's what we want to see. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and double check. Let's go to our sidebar option now. So I've went ahead and I've, I can push into the database successfully, but I want to go ahead and remember when I click one of these, for example, this one, I need to push that room ID into the into the, um, one sec, let me see. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna push that ID into the Redux store. Now, Triongs has a good question. So he says, hi, Sonny, love what you're doing. Thank you, dude. I have one question. What is the difference between using Redux and the data layer, the approach you used in the last uh, Slack clone? So, big difference, honestly. And what we're gonna be basically be saying is firstly, Ellie, no, we'll not be using it, but don't spam, please. Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> Difference between Redux and data layer. So they are both essentially global stores, right? But Redux is the sort of commercial level solution to state management, okay? You need to know Redux if you're gonna be a React developer. It's pretty much used in a lot of the companies you're gonna find yourself working at. So you do need to have this on your CV and it's gonna be a hugely valuable skill to have, okay? So definitely recommend you pick this skill up. All right. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and click this and we want to dispatch it. So when we click this, it goes ahead and fires off select channel because this does not have the prop add channel option. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is, and I just answered that question, dude. So 
Oh my God, Solution Science. Thank you, Sonny, for your videos. I'm just 17. I earn more than my parents do. I'm grateful to have you as my teacher. That's incredible, guys. Honestly, I think we're going to break 600 likes in select channel, right? Now, what I'm going to do with the select channel is I'm going to go ahead and do, 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 do. I'm going to say, okay, if there is an ID, all right? So if we get an ID passed through as a prop, and the only one with IDs right now is the, the, these ones because they're the ones we mapped through from the database. These ones didn't, didn't have an ID. And then what we're going to say is if, if there's an ID, I want to dispatch an action into that global store. So firstly, we need like something that allows us to dispatch that action into the global store. So we use, we need to get the dispatch sort of, I call it like a dispatch gun. It allows us to shoot actions into the global store, okay? So I'm gonna say const dispatch equals use dispatch, which is a fancy hook provided by the React uh, Redux dev tools. So let's go ahead and import that. And you see use dispatch from React Redux. We pretty much do that. Now we've got this little gun that we can shoot actions into the store. Okay. So um, there we go. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and say if ID, I'm going to say dispatch, right? And remember, we created an enter room function, right? So I'm going to type in enter room and I'm going to import it from our features, right? Remember, this was the action that we went ahead and done. Remember, that took something called a payload. Okay. That took a payload, right? Um, Ronit says, I got an internship on React looking for your help in upcoming days. Do join Zero to Full Stack Hero. The whole community will help you and me, right? So we're going to pass a payload here, which is we put the parentheses, we put an object. And inside of here, what I'm going to say is I'm going to pass in the room ID. And that's going to be the, um, let's think about it. That's going to be the ID, right, of the, the components so of the ID here. Now what's happening is when we click this button, it will push that value of the room ID or the channel ID into the global store. And basically think about what we're doing here. That's going to be the channel that we're actively going to be inside of. So if I click this one, it clicks the ID for this. It pushes the ID for this inside the global store. If I click coding, it pushes that into the global store, right? And this is where empty right now. So if I say hello, you see it's a fresh chat. If I do Papa Fam, it'll go ahead and switch it out. Papa Fam's empty as well. Hashtag Papa. Let's do Papa Fam Legends. Let's do YouTube. And you see, it's just pu pushing different values for the rooms into the global store. And then we use that value to go ahead and fetch the messages inside the room. All right. So at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, Vikram wanted a quick look over at the uh, sidebar container. So I'm going to take a quick water break while you see that. Thank you, Shaker. Keep yourself hydrated. I actually do need reminders when I'm live. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and say uh, on the select channel. So we actually went ahead and added this in, right? So what I'm going to show you is just to prove that this works, you can download the Redux dev tools. And what's amazing about the Redux dev tools, if I go ahead and open the inspector, I pull down this Redux tab. So you need to install Redux dev tools on Google Chrome. Um, and then let's go ahead and click ABC, right? And right now, oh, nothing's happening. Okay. So let's see why. Let's go ahead and do it again. It's because I didn't refresh. But if I click it, it dispatched an action. Now the action came from the app slice, right? We dispatched the enter room action. And now if I click on diff, it shows me how it modified the global store. So you can see it went into the app store, it went, it went into the room and room was initially no as the default value and it changed it to the room ID. Now, if I go ahead and see the action that was dispatched, this was the action that was dispatched. This was the payload of the action. And now if we check the overall app store, so imagine the global store, this is how we look at it inside the state. We can go ahead, click inside, and we can see inside our app now, we have the room ID currently selected. This is how it works inside of Redux, okay? If that, if you can grasp that concept, it honestly doesn't get harder than that when it comes to Redux, okay? Like honestly, that's the main grasp of it. Everything else can kind of come from that, okay? So let's go ahead and continue on. Now what we're gonna do that we have the room ID, we're going to go ahead and uh, let's just firstly test if we can add a second channel. Let's say Papa Fam. Oops, Papa Fam. And there you go. You see, now if I go ahead and open this up, I can go into Redux and I can click on the different ones. And you see, every time I click, and what's crazy, guys, is you can actually rewind so that I can jump back to these things. And I can rewind and I can actually like kind of like fast forward my application, which is insane. All right. And you can see, like, every time I click it, it changes the room ID. So you see how it's working under the hood right now, okay? All right, so this is actually pretty good. So Ankit says, Sunny, can you please use uh, style components instead of normal CSS and upcoming clones? It gives so much value in learning stuff. Yes, dude, I will definitely make sure I incorporate them. Uh, we're actually using it today, right? So 
Okay, so that's pretty cool now. Now we have the ability to select the channel. So at this point, we are done with the sidebar, all right? And we're literally six likes away from five, six, 550. So whoever is those six people, you know what to do, all right? Smash that like button. Let's get that number up. I swear to God, I think we can honestly keep climbing. There's nothing that's going to stop us today. Um, and what song should we have right now? Let's go ahead and have something a little bit upbeat. All right. So now what we're going to do is actually have the chat section. Right, because we've already got the room ID now, so I guess we can start actually implementing the messages inside of the chat. Right now, the chat where is the chat defined? So, if we go into app.js, you can see chat was over here inside of the home root. Okay, so chat refers to this big section over here. Right, so we're going to go ahead and build that out right now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, um, Bowser, I have connected it, uh, I've just done it in a new way. All right, so I'm going to create a chat component and I'm going to go ahead and say in components, I'm going to say chat.js. I'm going to say RFCE. And then here inside of here, what I'm going to do is chat container. So I'm going to go ahead and say const chat container equals styled div. Boom, boom. And there you go. And I'm going to go ahead and pull in styled from styled components. I don't know why it's not popping up on my auto uh, sort of my import it was working before but that's fine we've got to do it manually that's fine save okay now what i'm going to do is say this is a chat container oops chat container there we go All right perfect so we have the chat container up and running now i'm going to go back into my app.js and i'll make sure i've imported this component in to our application so there we go chat gets popped in right there okay so at this point to just double check that everything's working i'm going to open up chat.js and I'm going to go ahead and say H1, I am the chat screen, save. And we should see it's not there, right? Now it is actually there, but we just need to go ahead and, and get the color and things like that set up correctly. So the first thing I want to do is actually open up the chat screen. Now it's actually up here at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fix that. But let's open the chat screen. And I'm going to go to my chat container. And then the first thing I want to do is I'm going to type in, I'm going to say flex 0.7. Oops, save. I'm going to say flex 0.7 because I want it to take up 70% of the screen. Flex grow of one and overflow Y scroll. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this right here. Save. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to save. And if you can see, if I go ahead and spam this, I'll show you what's actually happening. You see, it's actually underneath the header at the point at this point in time. Okay, so I'll show you how we're going to fix this in a bit. All right, let's go ahead and save. All right, so at this point, the let's go ahead and firstly do inside of the chat screen, right? So we have, the first thing we're gonna do is we have the chat itself. So the first thing I need to actually do is pop a margin in there so I can see it. So if I do H1, let's just say hello, okay? And what I need to do is I'm gonna see margin top, let's just do 10, uh, let's just try and do 50 pixels. And we need to get that right so we can see it. There we go, so 50 is about right, let's say 40 maybe. Nope, let me say uh, 60. There we go, we try that one for now. Okay, so there we go, we can see it. Okay, so at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fetch the room information, okay? So it, we firstly need to go ahead and have the room details. Now, what am I talking about the room details? Um, I'll show you in just a sec. So what I'm gonna firstly do is I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's go ahead and create a header section at the top, okay? So at the top of this file, we're gonna have a header, okay? I'm going to have a header and I'm going to create this as a, a styled component. So here I'm going to say, thank you so much, Jason. Sure. I appreciate it, dude. Let's go ahead and hit 600 likes, guys. Come on, we can do this. Style.div, right? And then here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and do the following. So I'm going to say style div, and then this is going to be, we'll style that in just a sec. Inside of this header, I'm going to have a header left and a header right. And this will make a lot of sense. Just bear with me, okay? So we've got the header left and we've got a header right, right? So header, oops, header right, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the styled component versions of these. So I'm gonna say const header left equals styled.div, right, like so. We have authentication. We have everything inside this build coming very soon, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one. I'm gonna say header right, and then we go save, right? There we go, looks good. Now what I'm going to do is we've got header left, header right. So the header left is going to have a H4 inside of it. Right, so it's going to have a H4. 
So this is gonna be a H4. Oops, H4. Kite keeps opening up. So, so annoying. Right. We have a H4, and then here I'm gonna say strong. And we're gonna have a strong bit of text. Oops, strong, not string. Ugh. Yeah, and then in here, what I'm gonna have is a hashtag, and this will be the room name. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sort of fix this up with the room name in a second. I'll show you how we do that in a sec. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is actually have a little star icon, okay? So I'm gonna say, boom, star border outline. Okay, and let's go ahead and say star border outline. Paste. What accent is this, man? This is a London accent. And then there you go, you see it says the room name, okay? So now I can get rid of the H1 hello. And this top bit is gonna be the room name, okay? So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and pop out the header right section, and then we'll go ahead and do the fancy styling stuff to get this finished, okay? So inside of header right, I simply want a P tag, and I'm gonna have an info outline icon, and it's gonna say details next to it. So it shouldn't say P, <laughs> P, there we go. And it's gonna say something details, okay? So it's gonna have this, and it's gonna say details. And info outline icon, I'll show you what that is in just a sec. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this into my code at the top. There we go, save. And if we refresh, there you go. All right, so that looks pretty good, pretty clean right now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fix this up so it looks very nice, because right now I don't like how it looks. Okay, so here, what, how do I get this looking the way I need it? So I'm gonna say header equals style dot style div, and say display flex firstly. All right, this one gets me hyped up, man. Let's go ahead and smash the like button and get to 600, guys. Come on, display flex. Justify content space between. All right? And then I'm gonna say padding of 20 pixels border bottom. Boom, I'm gonna chuck that in here. All right, save. And now you guys can see that immediately, huge difference, right? Huge, huge difference, right? All right, so now what we're gonna do, these are actually not, these are not in inline styles. These are actually gonna be, uh, yeah. So at this point, we're gonna say header left. Um, and the funny, the, the funny thing I always find is that ever like sometimes people actually demand things live. And I'm like, dude, I don't think you realize how much we're building in this live session, All right? So here, what I'm going to say is I'm going to target the H4 inside because we have the little H4 at the top. And then what I'm going to do is say display flex, All right? Display flex. And then here I'm going to say text transform lowercase, All right? Save. And there you can see it drops to a lowercase. And I'm gonna then target the H4 and the icon inside. So similar to the approach we've done before, target the material UI icon margin left in the font size. Let's go ahead and do that right now. There we go. Looks pretty good, okay? So the next thing we can do at this point is we're gonna go ahead and I think we should also maybe say display flex on that. Let's go ahead and do this. Oops, that's a horrible error. Let's go ahead and do that, display flex. And there you go, you can see that. Display flex. And what I actually wanna do here is to say, um, Let's go ahead and say the margin left is there, but I'm going to align items, align item center. And oops, no, what is that doing? Nope. We've got align item center. And there you go, right? So it looks very nice. And uh, we can actually sort of push that slightly more away with the 20 pixel push. And there we go. Okay. So that's not actually targeted that one correctly. So we need to go ahead and say the H4. In this case, actually has it inside of it. So H4, H4 is gonna have margin right, margin right of let's say 10 pixels, very slightly, push it away. There we go. And on the right hand side, we're gonna go ahead and fix that. Okay, so on the right hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and do, styled is something called Felipe. This is actually called styled components. So styled components are very popular and I'd recommend jumping in, learning out how they work and stuff like that. Very, very useful stuff. Now, here I'm gonna target the, uh, the P element inside. I do display flex, align item centrally, font size of 14 pixels. I'm gonna target the P tag and the material UI icon inside of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and say margin right, five pixels. And there we go. And this is how it looks on Slack, right? So it's very clean at this point in time. Looks very, very nice at this point, okay? That looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good, okay? Joshua says, your CSS skills are awesome, man. Thank you so much, dude, appreciate you. All right, so over at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the chat over here, okay? So we've got the nice header section complete. Okay, so we've got the header section complete. The next thing I wanna do is actually go ahead and add a sort of a sibling component to the header. Now, in order to do that in React, you're not allowed sort of two components next to each other. So if I had something 
Here, for example, it would complain and say, no, 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 you're not allowed that. So I'm going to have a React fragment that wraps it. And then what I'll do is now I'm allowed to have something next to the header. All right, so what I'm going to do here is actually have a, um, a another sort of a, a div called chat messages, okay? So in this case, we're going to just create a, uh, a, a, let's go ahead and do this to say, this is going to be chat messages like this, okay? And this one is going to be a styled component div. So it's going to be const equals styled div. There we go. And we can come to style that one afterwards. All right, so style div. There we go. And inside of here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be fetching all the messages. And this is where we would sort of list out the messages. All right. So I'll show you how we're going to do that in a sec. But in order to do that first, we actually need this little chat box where we can actually send in messages. Okay. Um, Deepak Singh, yes, exactly. So if I type in yes, boom, you see it drops it over there and that's the message, right? So little message as well, okay? So what I'm going to do is let's start the messages. So go back to our chat. We need to create a chat component here, okay? So there you go. I'm going to make this a drop smaller, okay? So I'm going to make this like maybe a chest. All right, that's pretty good. All right, so we have the chat there. So underneath all of this, okay, so underneath the chat messages, I'm actually going to have something called a chat input, right? We actually have 570 likes, guys. Come on, let's keep going. I love it, man. Honestly, I, I, can't, I can't believe it. Thank you so much, guys. We're going to create a component called chat input, okay? Now, chat input is going to be our own little component that we're going to create, and this is going to be responsible for this magic, okay? And what this needs is going to have a few different things, right? So it's actually going to have a channel name that we're going to pass to it. So we're going to pass a prop, which is going to be the channel name. And we'll sort of sort that one out in a sec. So we need the channel name and I need the channel ID, right? Now we have the channel ID. This is just simply going to be the room ID. Now, how do I get the room ID? Wait a sec. We didn't have the room ID, did we? Oh, we did because we pushed it inside the store. Now, how do I grab it from the store? We use the selector that I mentioned earlier. So if I want the room ID, I say const room ID and I say equals use selector. This will allow me to pull a value from the Redux store. Okay, so I need to simply go ahead and import this from our React Redux. And then what I do is I get the select room ID selector that I wrote earlier. And what this does, it allows me to pull the room ID from the store. All right, so this will mean that I'm allowed to basically go ahead and uh, when I select a room, you can go ahead and do it. Botswell says, you're doing great, Sonny. Thank you so much, dude. Thank you so much for everyone watching right now. Appreciate all of you, honestly. All right, so what we're going to do at this point is we have the chat input, which we need to create. So I'm going to go into my components, create a component called chat input.js. Okay, RFCE, wait for it to pop in, boom. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say const uh, chat input container equals styled div right and this is going to be my styled div and i need to import styled components but again it's being weird with the auto wing port so i'm going to go ahead and manually do it there we go and I, this one is going to be responsible for there we go all right so this is going to be my div that surrounds my chat input now for the chat input screen how do we go ahead and build this one out okay so for the chat input screen i'm going to have a few things inside of it it's going to have a form okay so it's going to have a form right Right. Um, is anyone else obsessed to learn everything from start or not the whole progress with advanced concept? Karthik, we actually cover everything inside. Um, you can use React Context API if you want, but Redux is going to be the professional one to use. Right. So we're going to have a form. Inside the form, we're going to have an input field. Okay. Now this input field, oops, it's going to be a normal input field. Let's go ahead and say input. There we go. Oh, God damn it. Right. Input. There we go. And inputs are self enclosing, so we don't have that. Now the input is going to have a placeholder. Right. And the good thing about this placeholder is going to have back ticks because we're going to have string interpolation. So we're going to say message hashtag oops pound hashtag. And then remember, we passed in a prop. OK, so string interpolation here allows us to have a JavaScript variable inside of our string. So remember, the props come through here. Now we passed in a prop earlier. We passed in the channel name. OK, so at this point, I can get the channel name. But we didn't actually pass in that value, okay? Instead, what we did, we passed in the uh, room ID. I think it was the channel ID we passed in. So channel ID, okay? We passed that one in, All right? So at this point, this one, let's just go ahead and say message room, right? So for the meantime, until I, I figure that out, okay? Marty says, doing a great job. This is fire. Thank you so much, dude. For the input, there we have it, right? Now what I'm going to do 
is for the buttons. I'm gonna actually have a button and this button, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a material UI button. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna use a material UI button. Deep axing, yes. All right, so here we've got the button and then I'm gonna, the buttons have the text inside. So I'm gonna say send a message, right? And this button is actually gonna be hidden, right? So I'll show you what the trick that we're gonna do here. So this button is actually hidden, right? And it's got type submit. And there's a reason why we do this because if you have a button inside of a form um, and you have type submit, when you type in your input field and you hit the enter key, it will submit the button, right? Which, which allows us to have that sort of cool functionality without the visibility of a button. Now, when we click this button, we're gonna have a function click off, which is called send message. Okay, uh, Karthik, now I'm full-time teaching. So I, I, I do zero to full stack hero. By the way, so zero to full stack hero is a community that I built with the Papa fam. First link in the description, two days left for the huge sale. And then we pretty much close the doors. I don't know when we're opening them up again. Okay, so it's a huge sale right now. And uh, you guys can go ahead and enjoy that if you want. Okay, so uh, don't blame me if you said suddenly I didn't know it ended because I'm telling you now it's ending, right? So when I say send message, when you have a button event, it has a, something called an event. Here we say e.preventDefault because default, when we have a form and we hit enter on it, it will refresh the page. We don't want that, okay? So this will prevent the refresh, prevents a refresh from occurring. Oh yeah, prevents a refresh, okay? There we go. Uh, right. So Naruto, I will answer that when we get to it. Don't worry, dude. So, okay, at this point, we've got the chat input. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is it says chat input is not defined. So let's go back to our chat and let's go ahead and uh, import chat input. All right. So now if we refresh. Okay. So we've got the message room send. Okay. Got itchy ear. Yeah, ouch. All right. Headphones get uncomfortable sometimes. There we go. All right. So we've got chat input. So at this point, you can see if I hit this and I hit enter, it would actually trigger off the send button. Okay. So... Uh, so what I'm going to do is for the chat input, let's go ahead and sort of style this one out. All right. So inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to target the, go into my chat input here and we've got the style div. Okay. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to say a border radius of 20 pixels. Okay. So I want it to be a nice little border radius behind it. Let's go ahead and do this. Save. Oops. Border radius of 20 pixels. And this will give it a slight rounded corner. Okay. Now I'm going to target the form and I'm going to give it a bunch of properties. I'm gonna say position relative display flex and justify content center. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target the input form inside of the form by doing this. So we're going inside the form, inside the input, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say position fixed, bottom 30 pixels, width of 60, border one pixel, border radius three pixels, padding of 20 and outline of none. All of this will give us a nice look and feel to this, okay? Boom, save. And if I go ahead and see that, you see that guys, look at that, it drops to the bottom. Now this button is randomly over here, right? But this is actually gonna be sort of, you know, relative to where the screen moves, right? Cause it's position fixed and it's bottom 30 pixels off the ground. And the width is 60 pixels, hence why it's 60 pixels this way. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna hide that button. So I'm gonna target the form, target the button and say display none. And I'm gonna make it important so that way it just hides, right? Because it's a material UI button. So sometimes you have to override the styles, save. And boom, it disappears, right? Now we just get this nice functionality where if I type in and I hit enter, it will trigger off my send message function, right? But if I get rid of this line, the prevent default one, look what happens. If I hit enter, see how it refreshed? We don't want a refresh, right? Refreshing is not our friend. So that's why we don't want it, okay? So guys, let's keep the energy up, right? Because now we're about to hit 600, let's go. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and change this one. Naruto says, your tutorial is giving me the confidence to go out and apply for software development jobs. Do it, dude. You got this, man. And the Papa Fam's got your back. This is why I say to everyone, join. Honestly, join, join, join. This is just the best community ever. All right. So at this point, we have this, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this so we can fetch this information. Okay, so how do I go ahead and do this now? This is looking pretty good at this point. Now I'm going to firstly add a message in and then we'll carry on, okay? So I'm going to go into my chat input. All right, now let's go ahead and implement the send message functionality, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to protect against any kind of bug, right? Now I'm going to say, if there is no channel ID, right? Then I just want to return, right? I'm going to return false because I just want to exit this, this function. I don't want to do anything if there's no channel ID present, okay? The next thing I want to do is I want to access my DB, 
okay? Now, the first thing before I carry on actually is I've imported the DB because I'm gonna need it. I need to get the piece of text from this input field, okay? So how do I do that? I'm gonna show you a different way of doing it this time. I'm gonna say const, I'm gonna show you a use ref. So I'm gonna say input reference equals use ref. So typically you've seen me do it in a way where we map it to a piece of state, but this is another way of doing it. Okay, so we can go ahead and import use ref from React. And the way we do it is we save. And then here we go with another banger. Let's go guys, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. And now what we do is we go ahead and map this to this. We say reference to the input field is input ref. And you see it's just a lot cleaner, right? It's a lot cleaner when we do it this way. And now what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna go into the db.collection, okay? And I'm gonna go into the rooms, okay? And I'm gonna get the channel by going into the document with the channel ID. So think about what we're doing here is we're literally going through, right? Well, oh, what happened there? Where did it go? Um, douche, 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 douche. Where did it go? Come on. Let's wait until it loads up. But basically we're going into the, the room itself, the document, and then we're going into the collection of messages. Okay, so we're going into the collection of messages. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a message in there because I'm literally writing it in, right? And then to do that, what we do is we simply go ahead and we say, okay, the message I wanna add is message and the contents of that message is I wanna grab it from the input field, okay? So how do I grab it from this input field? We basically say, okay, get the input reference, get the current thing it's pointing to, right? And I'm basically gonna go ahead and say, get the value of it. Pretty much that's it, right? That's how we do it, we get the value of the input field at that point, okay? Next thing I'm gonna do is Shrikant. Thank you so much, dude. Shrikant Vengala for a lovely $5 donation. Appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much, All right? Now at this point, we've got the message. Now I need a timestamp. Just think about it this way. If I send a message in London and you're based in New York or Asia, or wherever it is, my timestamp is different to your timestamp. So if we both use Firebase's Firestore's timestamp, then it's gonna be the same. So we can sort our messages accordingly. So how do we do that, right? The first thing I need to go ahead and import Firebase, the actual Firebase, okay? And then what I need to do is go ahead and say timestamp. All right, timestamp. And what I do is I say at this point, Firebase dot Firestore. Guys, almost to 600 likes, let's go. My <laughs> Firebase dot Firestore, I just saw it and I was like, oh my God, that's creeping. We go to the field value and then we say, get the server timestamp. And then that's a function. Basically that will give us the server timestamps. Now all of our timestamps are the same. Boom, there we go, 600 likes, wow. Like just wow, man. A channel, we're getting like the same number of likes as channels, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of subs. Like, guys, when we get to 100,000 subs, oh ho, the world better watch yourself. Proper fans coming, it's coming fast, guys. 20 likes just flew in like that. God damn, this is what I'm talking about, guys. Let's go, All right. So the next thing I wanna do is when I send a message in, I wanna clear the text, okay? So the final thing I wanna do is go ahead and say input ref dot current dot value. Actually, what we can do at this point is we can say, okay, so you can do it this way, right? You can do it this way, or you can do it a way of, uh, I've forgotten how you actually clear it now. Deepak, thank you so much, man. So we can do it this way. This was a way of showing you, but I'm gonna show you right now the previous way. We're gonna say equals value equals input. And let's go ahead and say input, and this is how we initialize state, which is basically how we write a variable inside of React. By default, the input is gonna be blank, and we say set input. All right, thank you so much, dude, for supporting. And then here what we say is, instead of this, we go ahead and say input. And what we do is, whenever we type in the input field, we say on change. On change equals, and this will give us E, and we say, okay, whenever the user types in, I'm gonna set the input, to e.target.value, e.target.value. Oops, oh, e.target.value, like so. Save. And what this will do is, it will means, it means we need to import this. But that was just showing you an example of how you can use references as well. Ayalagali says, you're doing great service. I've been a React developer for three years, but I've learned a lot from you. Appreciate it, dude. Thank you so much, man. Uh, Moaz says, you are the GOAT. Let's go, man. Let's go, dude. Now what we're gonna do is here, we have the um input okay yeah we've got the value input here 
Nice. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get the user's information. Now, we don't have the user's information at this point. Ooh. So right now, I'm going to hard code it as Sunny Sangha. And then I need a user's image. Ooh, that's even harder, right? How do I do that? So I'm going to go ahead and grab a picture of me for now. All right, so I'm going to grab a quick picture of me. And let's see if nothing dodgy comes up. So I'm going to grab my picture here. Let me grab a quick picture. Let's say this LinkedIn one, copy image address, make sure it's a PNG. That's not even a PNG. I hate when you get a fake PNG, don't you? Like, you know, I'm, you guys know what I'm talking about when you get fake PNGs. There we go. I've got a JPEG. There we go. All right. So I've got a JPEG here. It doesn't matter. You can use any picture at this point. Okay. So I've just popped in a picture here. I'm going to go ahead and cut. So now we've got the user image. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to eventually have it. So when we log in, it will pull in that information. Right. Um, okay so you can do ref or you can do the other way guys it's completely fine right um there we go so and there are reasons for each and all right but we're not gonna get into that right now okay so now at this point what i'm gonna do is have it so that when i refresh right so let's go ahead and refresh and let's see now th what this will do is if we want to do is we're gonna say after we send that message we're gonna set the input to empty okay done Set the input to empty so now if i go ahead and try this out save and refresh okay let's get our firebase up and running okay so we're in let's say we go into the papa fan room and i'm inside the papa fan room I'll say a b c enter right oh did something happen did it break what happened oh my god okay let's have a look so we're inside here and nothing actually kicked off okay so nothing kicked off let's go ahead and see why okay so i went into message input there we go on change value is input set input e .target value message timestamp sunny user image there we go and refresh okay let's go ahead and refresh and let's say let me just double check my terminal okay we're good and here i'm going to say abc okay so right now something's actually freaking out at this point uh there we go cannot be called with an empty path okay because the channel id there we go it makes a lot of sense so we need the channel ID, okay, that needs to be passed in. So remember chat, okay, we got the room ID over here. Use selector, select room ID. So at this point, what I can do is I can actually just double check that it gets passed through. So I can say console log the channel ID. All right, and then I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. And I'm gonna go ahead and do F12. And then you can see the channel ID is no right now. Okay, interesting. If I click this one, now I've got a channel ID. Okay, so with the channel ID set, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type into this to say test. Okay. And I hit enter. Right. So I hit enter and nothing actually happened. Okay. So which is very, very strange. So now let's go ahead and see why. Because the channel ID got passed in here. Perfect. Okay. Let's go over here. And um, what we've done over here actually is we've said channel ID is room ID. Perfect. Okay. And let's refresh. Right. Okay, interesting. Let's have a look why this is happening. Document or collection rooms, doc channel ID, collection messages, add. Okay. There we go, channel ID. And we do have the channel ID correct at this point. We're going into the room and we should be adding into the so message is the input. Timestamp is this timestamp. The user is Sunny Sanger and the user image is this. Okay. And what you need to do sometimes is just cut the Cut this and say yarn start again. Okay, let's do this again. I do see the chat, guys, but I'm going to block you if you keep asking me to speak Hindi. I'm not uh, a pet. Okay, let's carry on. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and wait for that to restart. So now what I'm going to do... You can change the title in the index.html if you do want to. Yes, you can do that. So now at this point, if I go ahead and say testing, or we need to make sure we click a Papa Fam. So let's go ahead and we click Papa Fam. I type in testing. Enter. Okay, so this is interesting at this point, right? So if there's no channel ID, it's returning false. So let's go ahead and double check at this point when we hit send message, if there is a channel ID, right? So let's go ahead here. And then let's go ahead and say A, B, C, enter. Oh, there we go. That's what I was looking for. And I'll be called with an empty path, okay? So that's because I actually went ahead and didn't click the uh, correct channel. So Papa Fam. There we go. And if I type in test and I hit enter. Okay. So you see guys, it did reach there. 
I wonder at this point if it's actually oh if it's not oh, damn it guys if it's not channel ID there we go ah I missed it good spot guys good spot there we go that's that's how you know I need a water break smash the thumbs up button for everyone who got that right well done guys okay now that's exactly what the problem was All right so we're gonna click on Papa Fam type in testing boom and you see it disappeared perfect okay so now at this point we're gonna go ahead and check if it entered in All right so you can see we should have in here let's go ahead and see let's refresh oh there we go it came through ah oh, it was a bit of a second but let's go ahead and carry on that was water dylan yes that was water <laughs> everyone thinks it's vodka <laughs> but let's go ahead in the top one we say on messages all right so now you can see the message has been successfully entered into the room okay so that's exactly what i was looking for so now we have the collection here message timestamp user and user image okay so perfect we have a message there and uh, the channel name we need to go ahead and pass in so how do we get the channel name and all that good stuff set up okay so inside of chat right now let's go ahead and fetch the information that we need okay so first thing i want to do is get the room details and then i want to get the room uh the room messages so we can do this actually really nicely all right so using the new use collection i'll show you guys how easy it is to do this all right so here import use collection from react firebase there we go and we say const first thing i want to get the room details room details okay so i want to get the room details and here i'm going to say use collection and then what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say okay oops if there is a room id present right then i'm going to query the firebase database so i'm going to say db i need to import db i'm going to say db.collection uh yes dpack using pusher right so db.collection i'm going to say go into rooms and get the document with the room id okay so this will be the room details right this will go ahead and get us that information okay so that's how we do that in this case and then for the room messages what i'm going to do is a similar thing um i think it's my, it might actually be use collection it might be um let me check that in a sec actually but yeah we're gonna do this one and then what i'm gonna do is i think it's use document instead use a document oh, we go use document yeah and this one will be doc room id perfect and then what i'm gonna say is const i'm gonna get the room messages as well and this equals use collection and you see how easy this is guys like this is crazy man like it's so much easier doing than the, the traditional way that you're doing it right so you say okay only if there's a room id then Anchu, should i give you a super chat oh she didn't do all right it's up to you man you say db dot collection and then i'll say rooms uh dot doc and i'm gonna say room id dot collection of messages so i'm gonna go into the messages oops messages and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and say order by okay and remember the timestamp that we passed in i'm gonna say order by the timestamp ascending okay so order by timestamp ascending okay and then there you go so it's gonna order by the timestamp so now you can see this will go ahead and get me the room messages plural and this will get me the room details okay so how do i check this this actually is doing what it says it's doing if i go ahead and pop open this and i go ahead and say console log let's just check the room details first room details and let's go ahead and do room messages save and let's go ahead and see now you can see look chat 25 26 25 is giving us the data back this is actually correct and if i say dot data and now you can see that it gets us back the room details so in this case if i click on the room i have to make sure i'm inside of a room so in this case if i go into papa fam and you can see that it gets me the papa fam room if we're going to abc it gets me abc the room okay and same with the room messages but this will be a collection of documents so you can see it works okay it comes through now how do we pass this over into our chat input it's pretty simple actually the way we do it is we pretty much go down to our chat input and then here where we had channel name we pass in room details and it can be maybe undefined so we need to do that and then we say pass in the name and now we pass through the room name inside of chat input i can actually get the channel name and here i can actually say message channel name so now what you should be able to see is look 
by default it says message undefined because we're not inside of a room and we can fix that afterwards but if i click papa fam it will go ahead and it will actually pass that through as the value now have we correctly passed it through as a question channel name there we go lowercase c boom saved right and then let's carry on guys we are literally come on let's keep going we're almost at 650 likes that's incredible honestly i'm i'm a bit mind blown today like we had a tech issue we lost we had to start from zero 650 people came in and like that's just mad right let's go ahead and then click on this and there you go look it says message papa fam on the bottom look message there you go you see that if i click it it changes over here message abc message papa fam and i want the same thing to happen over in the room name okay so for the chat uh there we go games are thank you so much abdisarak shake oh appreciate you dude he goes the value you bring never stops to amaze me just finished the netflix going to see another build on the way damn keep up the good work thank you dude i really appreciate the kind words honestly that sort of stuff keeps me going so i really do appreciate it thank you man here where we have the room name i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing i'm going to go ahead and pop in the rjsx and here i'll say room details dot data dot name okay so dot data dot name and let's go ahead and hit save and let's do refresh i remember by default it's going to be undefined so it won't show any value okay so we can go ahead and change that afterwards uh and then what i'll do is uh let's go back to papa fam and you can see now we're inside the papa fam room now we're inside the abc room and you see look works very very nice okay works very very slick right now at this point what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and have it so that we have um let's just double check something i'm going to go ahead and add so the messages list out Okay, so we already have the messages over here. And what I want to do is I actually want to render through those messages and actually sort of do some magic with that. So how do we do it? We go over here to chat messages. I go ahead, open up my JSX and I say, okay, let's go into the room messages. And it could be un it could be undefined at some point because it's a a async. Uh, it needs to fetch it. And we're going to say for every single document inside those messages, I'm going to have a bit of code that runs, okay? And I'm going to basically destructure that that message and that has a message inside of it as a timestamp remember when we pushed a message and as a user and a user image right and then this has doc dot data so we basically are pulling it apart from the message um document okay then what we're going to do is i'm going to actually return the following so i'm going to say return and i'm going to basically create a message component which is going to be self-enclosing and it's going to take the following props so it will have a key because we're mapping through a bunch of stuff um, but what it's actually going to do is this message component will take the following information. So it's obviously going to freak out at this point because it doesn't know what this message component is. Okay, so we need to go ahead and create it. So I'm going to grab message, go over here, go to components, create message.js, save, do my little RFC trick, wait for it, boom, pop it in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, const message container, right? So message container equals style div, right? Style div. Boom, boom. And I'm going to go ahead and pop this in. Now, the message container. Let's go over to message. I like this one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in styled. Import styled from styled components. There we go. And guys, we are literally near four likes away from 650. Let's go. Come on. We're almost there. So message container now. I'm going to go ahead and pop this in there. And then inside the message container, we're going to have a few things, right? So we've already got a few things being passed in. So firstly, I'm going to go ahead and import this inside the chat boom save and there you go okay so now inside of papa fan we should have a message here right but it's not actually being rendered because we have nothing being rendered here so firstly this takes a few props that we just passed in so i'm going to destructure the props and inside we have the message the timestamp and a few extra things okay so we have message timestamp user and user image okay message timestamp user and user image three likes away let's go guys wow this is so sick man i can't believe it we're actually going so fast uh this song's not doing it for me let's go ahead and change it uh you know what let's try out the trending songs on epidemic sounds all right so let's see if that works actually you know what? i'm not gonna risk anything let's go ahead and do my songs all right let's go ahead and do jump to the bottom let's go ahead and do something like oh this one okay all right so let's go ahead and say 650 oh nice there we go 650 likes let's carry on guys wow thank you all that's so cool man right so for the message i'm gonna have a few things we have the image the image source is going to be the user image prop okay so the user image prop 
and let's go ahead and save it and then you can see that it pops through now so if i add another message and say test and make sure i'm in the correct chat as we go as we test remember it's, it's passing through as me right now there we go okay uh there we go nice guys 700 come on let's hit a like target of 700 i think we can do that man i think we can do that all right so let's go ahead and say uh let's have a message info all right so message info container which I'm going to create. So this is going to be message info, which is going to be a similar sort of div, the styled component div message info. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, message info. And then thank you, Ancho. Appreciate it, dude. So here we're going to say H4. And inside of that, we're going to say user. And then I'm going to basically have some little kind of, you know, I'm going to add a JSX parenthesis block. And then we're going to say span. Okay, now I'm going to span a few things, right? Please don't spam the chat, dude. Uh, otherwise I'm going to kick you out. All right. So here I'm going to span and I'm going to put in the following. Okay. Aisha, what's up? Nice. I don't see any chat conversation in Twitch. It's not, but in, uh, in YouTube, it's going off pretty good. Um, so now we get the timestamp right now. How do we change the timestamp that we get from Firebase into a readable string? And this is the line of code to do it. Okay. So you guys can maybe break this one down in your own time, but I'll explain quickly. It basically creates a new date object from the timestamp. We need to convert it with this to date object, which allows us to convert it. And then here, what I need to go ahead and do is say to UTC string. So if I save it now, we should be able to see, look, Sunny Sango on this time spent, sent that message. Okay. So it looks really good. And the next thing I want to do is underneath this, I'm going to have a P tag and the P tag is just going to have the message itself. <laughs> okay. So it's going to have the message itself. See, like testing, testing, if I say ABC, 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 enter, the message down here says ABC, ABC, ABC. Okay, so it's very hard to see that, but you guys can see it's at the bottom. I promise it's there, all right? So the first thing I want to do is start making this look like it's the way that it should look, okay? Guys, we're almost at 70, honestly, really almost at 70, all right? Um, so what we're going to do now is go into our message container, all right? So here, and I'm going to say display flex. All right, and then I'm going to basically go ahead and say align item center, align item center. And then we'll say padding of 20 pixels, 20 pixels. Okay. And then here I'm going to say, go and target the image and make the height of 50, okay. 50 pixels. All right. And I'm going to say border radius. All right. I'm going to say border radius of uh, eight pixels there we go okay and look at that pretty cool right it's pretty cool all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and you see that's actually starting to look similar to the sort of goal that we're trying to get to okay so we have the image set so the next thing i want to do is target the message info so i'm going to go to the message info and say padding left i don't want to touch that next bit okay so padding left of 10 pixels you can use padding or a margin there to be honest it's up to you i'm going to target the h4 and inside the span tag I'm going to target something. I'm going to say inside the span tag, I'm going to do a color of gray, font weight of 300, margin left four pixels, font size 10. And this is going to make the timestamp a lot smaller. There you go. And it starts to look a lot more like we wanted it to. Look at that. Am amazing stuff. So this is so dope. Okay. That's pretty cool, right? Really, really cool. Uh, Ancho, please don't spam, dude. Um, <clears throat> so at this point, this is really, really good. Now, if I click on ABC and I say hello, can you see what just happened there? Look, it actually just changed based on what I've got entered in here. And it will load up the messages inside that room and it just works. Just works so clean. That's amazing, right? It works really, really good, really clean. Okay, now, how do I get this though, right? So if I go into a new channel, right? So if I go into a new channel, how does it automatically scroll to the bottom? And if I want to add a new message, so let's say testing, how do I get that? Look at that ABC. Wow. How do we do that trick? Right. So if we want to get that trick happening, firstly, you need to smash the thumbs up button. <laughs> Joking. I, I just had to do like a, you know, what's his name? Uh, Graham Stephan sort of kind of vibe there. Uh, let's carry on. <clears throat> right. Look at the numbers going up, man. This is crazy. Okay. Right. So now what we're going to do. Yes, this will be a, everything that's kind of you're seeing now is going to be on the channel after. So it goes straight up on the channel after so you can rewatch it. So at this point, what I'm going to do is we have the messages here. Okay. So in order to get that sort of auto scroll functionality, what you need to do is a very neat little trick. Okay. So we render the messages over here. Okay. So just underneath the end of those messages, I'm going to create an, uh, a sort of a div called chat bottom. Okay. 
So I'm going to create a div called chat bottom. And this is literally just going to be a div, an empty div. Okay, so you don't even need to maybe have a... I'm going to give a little bit of padding to the bottom though, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a styled component at the bottom. So and it's going to have a padding bottom of 200 pixels. And there is a reason why we do that. Okay, so so wait for this to load. Boom. And there we go. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say chat uh, bottom. Now what I need to do is I need to give this a reference. And I will show you why, because we're going to do some pretty damn cool little trick right now. Okay, so, so here we've got, hey, Sonny, are you just front end with React or does it have no back end? I haven't used Firebase before. So right now this is actually more of a front end build. Firebase powers everything on the back, handles it all for us. But I do do full stack development, yes. So what I'm going to do is chat ref. I'm going to go to the top and create a piece of reference. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these console logs. At the top, I'm going to say const chat ref equals user ref. And I'm going to go ahead and say initialize it with a value of no to begin with. Okay, now use ref, we need to go ahead and import that. So I'm gonna go ahead and boom, we import it from React like so. Now to connect my use ref to this, I just go ahead and say ref equals use ref. And now I have a big pointing at that, the bottom of the chat. Cause think about it, it maps out the messages and then we have an empty div at the bottom. And the reason why, there's a reason why we use this empty div. So whenever this page loads, I'm gonna go ahead and spam this chat right now. Okay, so I'm gonna say hey, hey, hey. something like this, right? There we go. I'm going to refresh and let's see that we should have all of this stuff pop in. Uh, wait for it to load, wait for it to load, wait for it to load. Let's go into Papa Fam. It's just a bit slow right now, but it will work. Okay, there we go. Nice. So you see that that's just because of my internet, All right? But can you see right now how firstly we added the padding 200 so that way we can see the bottom. And the second thing that I wanted to do guys is I want it to, so that when we go on to like, let's say we're on ABC and it loads the messages. If I go into Papa fam, I want it to scroll to the bottom by default. Okay. So, whoa, Savan. Thank you, dude. He goes, really appreciate your valuable content, which is priceless. Help me out to get my first freelancing gig last year. And you just dropped a massive 27.99 euros. That's like a, that's dinner tonight. I'm going to call my mom. So let's go get some sushi. <laughs> thank you so much, Gwen. Uh, really, really appreciate you, dude. Sven, sorry. Sven, thank you. Thank you so much, dude. Appreciate that, man. So the way I'm going to do this little trick is I'm going to have a use effect. And the use effect allows us to run a bit of code when the component mounts. Okay. So use effects are written like such okay so i actually cover this in my in zero to full stack hero if anyone's watching and interested in joining the papa fam two day sale empty it finishes in two days guys first link in the description check it out ff says sunny i've landed a job in london at stewards because of you dude let's go for a beer man when Lo when london lockdown's over let me know hit, hit me up All right so the use effect here right we've already, we're already imported it over here so i only want to sort of do it when um when the component mounts as well as when the room ID changes. Okay. So when the room ID changes, and what's really cool about these use collections is they give you the loading state and an error state. I don't need the error state, but the loading state can be handy here. Right? So what I can actually say here is that if the room is loading, this is Firestore, right? If the room is loading, so if the room is still loading or if the loading state has changed, it will refire this code. And what I want to do is I want to go to that chat reference and I'm going to say, okay, get the chat reference, go to the current thing you're pointing at and scroll it into the view. So save. And what happens is, is as soon as it loads, it's going to basically scroll me down. So this one, it doesn't need to scroll down. But if I go to the Papa fam, watch how it scrolls me to the bottom. Boom. Scrolled me to the bottom. Amazing. Works. Look really, really nice, right? Works. Right? So at this point, then what you can do is you can customize this with some really nice little uh, sort of additional extras. Okay, so what I can do is I can, I can actually add in this behavior smooth, right? So if I go ahead and do this behavior smooth now, now look at this guys. If I go to ABC and I go to the Papa fam, it opens it up and it scrolls me to the bottom. Now that's slick. Smash that thumbs up button. That is damn slick, All right? This is pretty cool, right? That's pretty damn fun, All right? <laughs> now guys, if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, subscribe. It's going to be big. We're going to be keep dropping these builds, but we're almost at 700, almost at 700 views, right? So let's carry on guys. 700 likes, sorry. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is every time I push a message, like, look, hello, see that? Oh, it didn't actually throw me to the bottom. So I want to go ahead and fix that. So what I'm going to do is that chat reference I had earlier, I'm actually going to go ahead and pass that to my chat input, right? As a prop. So I'm going to say chat reference, right? I'm going to pass this as a prop to my 
uh, to the chat input, right? So chat ref equals chat ref, okay? So Skia, yes, it would, but this is sort of, those are additional features you can go ahead and add on and things like that. You can obviously sort of, you should add lazy loading and things like that in, but this is sort of, you know, this is enough for, for uh, one single build, okay? Um, so at this point, chat ref, okay? We've done that, so we pass it through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab it here, but good, good couch. Use MySQL now, I'm not using MySQL. Uh, okay, so at this point, we've got the chat reference here. Now what's cool, right, is that when I go ahead and do chat input, because I passed it over here, once I send that message in, all I need to do now is basically go ahead and add do the following. I just say chat reference dot current scroll into view. Same thing, but when I send a message inside of chat input. So now let's go ahead and check this out. So let's go ahead and wait till this loads up, click Papa Fam, and you can see it should load up, scroll to the bottom. And if I'm at the bottom over here and I say YOLO, enter, boom guys, look at that. That's that's pretty damn cool, right? Is the Zero to Hero course live or video? Um, so we have weekly live coaching calls, dude. So if you're platinum, you'll get a weekly coaching call every single week. If you're diamond, you'll get uh, a coaching call every week and then every fortnight, an additional coaching call, which is pretty damn intense. So uh, I'd recommend that. But platinum is the pack I recommend. First link in the description, check it out. We also have the recorded content for the modules. So those are gonna be pre recorded coaching call guys um, that I go ahead and do. I record it and it gets uploaded to the course. So you get, honestly, you get more and more content as it goes. And we also have a student area where people publish games and all sorts of stuff. So, so sick, honestly. Let's hit 700 likes, guys. If you're enjoying this right now, smash that thumbs up button. Uh, it's crazy that we have 134 people watching, but we have literally nearly 700 likes. That's insane. Really, really appreciate you guys. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and this is actually working pretty good at this point. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the authentication portion of this build, I think. Okay, so if I go ahead and refresh at this point, you see like it says message undefined and this sort of stuff. Now, what I can do here is I can protect this screen from showing this stuff if we do not have this information. Okay, and that's a good idea, I think, to do. Right. So. I'm only gonna show any of this stuff if we've selected a room, right? So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say, okay, only if we have the room details, only if we have the room details and if we have the room messages, should we then go ahead and load up this, right? This is a better practice to have. And this will basically go ahead and protect. So you see that, right? So now we don't get anything in this. We click a channel and then it go ahead and, uh, goes ahead and loads it. That's a lot cleaner. Okay, that, that really looks a lot more cleaner when we do that. Okay, so um, let's carry on. So look, Papa Fam, there you go. Um, nice, this looks really good. Oh, nice, Kush says, I use your own Slack videos, reference to build my real estate website. That's, oh, that's actually really cool, dude. I'd love to hear more about that. I'm getting into real estate myself now. Okay, let's carry on, guys. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and implement the auth login authentication and then we're going to refactor so that these are actually pulling in your names. And we're going to go ahead and deploy this bad boy and you guys are going to be able to jump on this app and try it for yourself. So it's going to be so sick, All right? Let's do this. I know the music is sick. I swear it's like becoming like a, a coding DJ. I swear my, I don't care. My music playlist for coding is the best. It's like the goat of all, of all playlists for coding. I don't care. I'll, I'll say that. It's clean, man. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and let's imagine, how do we set up a login system, okay? So if we go into app.js, this is where the magic all begins, okay? So app.js is where everything sort of starts off from. So, so now what we're gonna do is go inside of app.js. Now, this is really cool, okay? So before we had to use use something called on auth status, right, and things like that. Um, <laughs> it says that was why, yes. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, but now we have the handy React hooks, okay? So I can go ahead, import use auth state, which is a really cool hook. And this one is so damn good because what we can do is we can say const user, look at this. If I go ahead and drop this line of code in, this gives me the user, it gives me a loading status and you get the, and all you need to do is pass it the authentication and the authentication we prepped earlier inside of our local Firebase file. So if I hit save on this now, we should have the loot user inside of our app.js. Now, what's really cool about this guys is that what we can do is we can say, okay, inside the router, right? Inside the router over here, if we have, so if inside the router here, if we do not have a user, then show a login screen. Okay, then show a login screen. 
else. And this is kind of a protected route now because else it will render the app. Okay, so it will show the login screen if you're if there's no user present. It says login is not defined. Makes sense. So we need to go ahead and create the login. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a login component. Login.js. Boom. Pop that in. RFCE. And guys, we're almost at 700 likes. This is insane. Let's keep going. And here I'm going to say const login container equals style.div. Boom, boom. Like so. I'm going to go back to my app.js. Over here, my login, do my import. There we go. We've, log we've just imported it. And then what I'll do, open up login.js. And then in here, I need my styled components. So I'm going to pull them in. And I'm going to have my login container over right here. Perfect. And there you go. We have a login, right? And it's not working yet. We're almost there though. All right. So login container, right? Inside the login container, I'm actually going to have an inner login container, right? So I'm going to have login in a container and I'll make I'll show you why we do this it's gonna help us out in just a sec okay so at this point what I'm gonna do is and guys we are three likes away from 700 let's go wow Aisha's Aisha's there hey what's up Aisha all right let's go guys all right so now login in a container what we're gonna do here and the reason why we see a white screen is because we do not have a user that is inside okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the image right and this is an image of slack I'm going to go ahead and pop an image of Slack in there and we should see uh, login in the container is not defined. So boom, there we go. 700 likes, 700 likes. And we have a hundred and so 140 people watching across platforms. That is insane. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Wow. Darwood Raza, a small, really smart. Thank you so much, dude. Honestly, thank you so much for, for donating. I really, I really appreciate anything. That's really honestly kind of you. Look at that guys, the Slack logo, that's huge. I don't like that, the Slack logo, okay? So um, let's carry on. So what I'm gonna do with the login in the container, I'm gonna target that image and I'm gonna make it smaller immediately so that way we can start seeing things, all right? So here I'm gonna say, okay, target the image. Target the image. And then I'm gonna say, okay, object fit contain to keep the aspect ratio. Object fit contain. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say height of 100 pixels. Right, of 100 pixels. I don't even care. This Slack, this Slack build is damn dope. Margin bottom of 40 pixels, and then save, and boom! Look at that. Looks fresh, right? Now for the login container over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, let's give it a background color, a height of 100 view height, display grid, and place item center. This gives it a very nice extra sort of. It will center the element like so. That looks pretty clean. Looks good, right? Looks good. Now for the inner container, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, give it padding of 10, 100 pixels, a text align center, background color is going to be white, and I'm going to give a border radius of 10 pixels. And I'm going to show you a little cool trick, okay? So at this point, you guys can see it's got a nice little border radius and it looks okay, right? But I'm going to show you how crazy small tweaks are in CSS. I swear to God, can we hit 750, 800? Oh, I swear, we're going to keep on growing. I don't know where these likes are coming from, but thank you. Keep on, just smash the thumbs up button if you're enjoying this. But guys, Va Fabian Van Dyke, yes, you won in the challenge as well, dude. Appreciate you. So guys, check out this little trick, right? Very small differences, right? So this is a very subtle box shadow you can just copy. But look how amazing the effect it has, right? So a box shadow is about to be dropped. Look at that. I swear to God, like, look, a tiny little difference. And all of a sudden, the whole UI is clean now. All right, so this is really cool. Uh, redirects can protect you, but this actually sort of protects you at a much stronger level because it just, it doesn't even load the component in the first place. A redirect, there is a moment where it kind of catches you, then redirects you, okay? So I wouldn't, I would say do it this way in, 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 to be sure. Now, what we're going to do, <laughs> we are going to reach a, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that one, but a gazillion likes. Um, so now what we're going to do is inside of here, we've got the image and I'm going to go ahead and say, let's have a div of login text. We're going to have some login text here. Okay. So I guess what we can do is remember, let's maybe have a H1. Okay. And then we're just going to say sign in, sign in to the Papa fam. Okay. And then underneath that, I'm going to have a P tag. And this P tag is going to have a P, not please. 
And we're going to say papa.slack.com, something like that. Now, guys, just to shout out, we do have a Slack community. It's pretty damn cool. We have over 220 or 30 members now inside of the Papa Fam Slack community. To join, first link in the description. Go ahead, check it out. We're running a huge sale right now. Papa Fam has each other's back. It's just the best community. You guys are seeing the energy right now. It's so cool, honestly. All right, so let's go ahead and hit save. And you can see sign into the Papa Fam. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a material UI button. Okay, now the material UI button is going to say sign in with Google. Okay, sign in with Google, like so. And then I'm going to hit save. And now what I'm going to do is say type submit. Type submit. Like so. And then what I'm going to say is on click. I right, on click. And I'm going to basically trigger off a sign in function. Okay, now I need to create this sign in function. So firstly, I need to import the button from material UI core. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then I'm going to go ahead and say this. Uh, where is it? Material, material, material UI. Uh, there we go. Save. And then the sign in function, I'm going to go ahead and say const sign in. Const. I'm going to say const sign in equals e. Boom, boom. I'm going to say e.prevent default. Like so. Okay. Like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, now this is where the fun part comes in. Okay. So look, it's got a sign in with Google button, but that looks a bit trash at the moment. Okay. So this button looks ugly, right? And I'm, I'll admit it, it does not look nice. Okay. So what first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. I'm going to target the button. All right. And I'm going to say, okay, the button should have a margin top 50 pixels. And I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to make the text. I'm going to change the transformer text, change the background color to a green because by default, everything is uppercase. So it's going to be, it's going to be a lot better, right? Jay says, Sonny, the true beast. Jay, we're at nearly like 750 likes, dude. And the whole thing like crashed. Oh my God. We're just killing it today. All right. Let's carry on guys. Um, all right. So at this point, um, what we're going to do is, oh, okay. So if there's no form, yes, you're right. You don't need the button type submit. I did have a form there before for something else. That's why I had that. So good catch, uh, Samuel. That's what I look for, man. That's what I look for, right? So, uh, Naruto, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon, dude. So here where we have the sign-in. Now, how do we get a Google... I've already done a Hulu clone before. I'm going to drop that on the channel, though. So uh, how do we get the Google sign-in? Okay, so Google sign-in is a lot easier than you think. Smash the thumbs up button if you want to find out, right? So we're going to go ahead and do it right now. I um, swear to God, it's going to be like, how many of you think I can implement the entire Google login in like one line of code? right one line of code right one line of code right are you ready for this one line of code is going to do the whole google login all right you ready for this this is where it's just like unbelievable power right so here i'm gonna say auth i'm gonna pull in my auth from my local firebase i'm gonna say sign in with pop-up boom okay then i'm gonna go ahead and pass in the pop-up now the pop-up is the provider that we set up earlier Okay, so it's a provider. Remember, we actually pulled that in from our local Firebase file. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that in. And then I'm going to say, okay, that's all good. And then I don't need to do anything after I've signed in. I'm just going to make sure that I catch any errors. Okay, so if, I, if there is an error, I'm going to alert the user of the error. I'm going to say error.message. All right. Okay, pretty cool. All right, let's just let's go ahead and see if this all works, right? I mean, like that seems a bit too easy to be, to be true, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit sign in with Google. Okay. Pretty cool. Remember, you needed to, you need to enable that on the the, uh, the Firebase platform. I'm gonna go to the Papa React team account, and boom, that was it. That was it. We are literally logged in right now, which is in crazy, crazy stuff, right? And what's so cool about this is that if I go to app.js, literally, guys, this is doing all the hard work for us right now. This right here is doing everything for us. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and let's see. Let's let's start some new suggested tracks. Oh my god! Okay, let's do this. All right, can we hit 750 likes? God, this is the Papa Fam anthem. I didn't even realize I was about to play that. That's good. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now and get the user's information. I'll show you how easy it is without having to use a lot of readout stuff. Okay. So are you guys ready? All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the header and start implementing or using the user's information where it's needed. All right. This song gets me so hyped up. This is when we first dropped Announce the Papa Fam. This is where that vibe comes from. This is what it's all about. Right. This is what I try and communicate in these videos. That's what we do, guys. All right. So now what we're going to do is go over to your header. And then we're going to jump into Alex says, what is this playlist? What is the song? 
This is like the Papa Fam anthem, dude. This is called Don't Wanna Sleep by Swift7. And we don't wanna sleep here, dude. We do not wanna sleep. So header avatar, right? So I'm gonna go into my header and I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay. I'm gonna basically go ahead and say, yeah, I'm gonna say, okay, the source is gonna be, oops, the source is gonna be the user and it could be undefined. I'm gonna say the photo URL. Okay, photo URL, like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually gonna have the uh, alternative as well. It's gonna be the user's display name. Now, how do I get these values? Okay, so remember, we can actually just pull this in using that neat little use auth state hook from Firebase. Now, that's as simple as it is, honestly. That gives us the user and it just works. Papa found the movie, I like that. I like that, dude, Papa found the movie. Can you imagine that? Holy crap, I'd watch that. I'd literally watch it and I'll be the one that someone will be acting. All right. I'm going to import it. There we go. Save. Mama says, loving this. Oh, there she is. All right. So now you can see we sign in. Now there's an issue with that, right? Because the source says user photo URL and it didn't work. All right. So at this point, what I want to do is firstly, I want to go ahead and make sure that this is all done correct. So let's save. Let's refresh. And the header. Right, interesting. So the source isn't actually being passed in as we wanted it to. And this is because we have header avatar. This is using the correct avatar one. So boom, hover, pointer, styled avatar. Avatar is over here, material UI call, done, cool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and make this a bit easier to read so we can see it. And then what I'm gonna do is I actually wanna make the, the avatar have on click, we'll actually go ahead and do an anonymous function inline. It'll use the authentication and just basically cause a sign out function, which actually signs us out of the app. So with that alone, we should actually have everything we need. Okay, so, oh man, this is another one that we had. This is literally all the songs that we had when we first dropped it, honestly. Hitesh says, imagine Christopher Nolan directing a movie on Papa React. Oh my God, that's so funny you said that. That's amazing, dude. All right, so I'm gonna click this and it should log us out. There we go. Okay, so it did log us out, right? So we need to figure out why I'm not getting that picture come through, right? That's the main issue that we have right now. So if I do Papa React or team, let's go ahead and see. It should log me in and we should see it come through. Okay. So now what I can do is to, to quickly debug this is fine. We can go ahead and say console log and just say user is user. And then let's go ahead and see what's happening in the in the terminal. User is, here we go, and here we got a bunch of stuff. Photo URL. Ah, that's why. Okay, so it's user.photo URL. So for the photo URL, it's capital, right? Papa is emotional now, it's crazy, right? So that's why. And there you go, look, there it is. Perfect, All right? That's amazing. Now at this point, we've got Papa Fan, we can click here. And what I wanna do is I wanna send that message as Sunny, but not through like a hard-coded value, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna go to my chat input. And remember where we sent that message earlier, we sent it with hard-coded values here, okay? So now we don't wanna do hard-coded because why do we need to do hard-coded? Because we actually have the actual thing working, okay? So this is clean. I'm not even doing this is really clean code right now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is we've got the user being passed. No, we haven't. We've got the, uh, I need to pull the user in at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the user in like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull the hook in and the hook does it very efficiently. So it's gonna make sure it uses it once and it just reuses it. Carl says goat, thank you so much, dude. Let's hit, let's hit likes, man. Let's go ahead, come on. I think we can hit 750, dude. I seriously think we can do it. Okay, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do auth is not defined. We need to import auth. There we go, save, refresh, like that, okay? And then the user's name, okay? So for the user's name, I'm gonna go ahead and say user.displayName. For the user's image, I'm actually gonna go ahead and say, rather than that one, we'll say user.photo URL. And the best part about this is we just getting this information straight from Firebase. So boom, now if I go ahead and say Papa Fam, and I go ahead and say, yo, what's up? Boom, look at that guys. If I say ABC, it even scrolled me down. That's clean. I don't even care what anyone says. That is so clean. That is like, that is like, I'm proud of that, dude. That's actually a really, really good build. Like, that's the kind of like, uh, the sort of, you know, you want that to be, you want your code to be that level of like spotless, right? That's like, I swear, I was proud of that one. I was proud of that one. Guys, 11 likes away from 750. Okay, so at this point, we have 
our app working in the way we expected it to okay everything works in a nice way here we can add channels let's go and say uh let's just say like uh let's say youtube channel okay let's click on youtube and then let's go ahead and say yo what's up youtube and you can even put emojis in so let's drop a fire emoji oh oops my up in the file Oh, okay. Guess my rocket crashed. Yo, what's up, YouTube? There we go. And it works, right? So that looks pretty good, right? So I'm going to go ahead, deploy this in a sec. And then we're actually going to go ahead and do this, right? Does Firebase hooks and React hooks do the same kind of the hood? It actually allows you to go ahead. Um, it uses a use effect under the hood. I actually teach inside of Zero to Full Stack Hero how to create your own hooks. Really, really fun exercise as well that we do inside the course. Remember, guys, two days, two days left inside of our sale. And then we close the doors to the community and I don't know when we're opening it up again but all I know is that the energy is untouchable like it is the best like that's it period all right so at this point pretty good I think everything here is actually perfect in the sense of besides that I almost missed that the sidebar okay so the sidebar at this point the sidebar at this point has got a hard-coded name we don't want a hard-coded name we want the actual name of the user so what I do is I just pretty much go ahead and grab the user and again, if we're not using this, oh, and I actually have another feature on to do the loading state. So if I forget, remind me, okay? Carl says, really like that scroll to bottom. Yeah, really, really cool addition. Now here, what I do is I go ahead, grab the user, like so, save. Not defined, yep, I always miss that one. Wait for it, and let's go ahead and import this. And guys, by the way, if you do want access to this code and you're feeling lazy, then the second link in the description is the link to the Papa GitHub repo where all of this is available. Now, I wanna address something. Now, did you notice how, what happened just there? I had refreshed the page, I was logged in already. So if I go ahead and refresh here, I'm already actually logged in. But what's up, Andy B? He goes, can't wait to watch this back later. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. It's really, really fun build, actually. So you see when we refresh, right? There's a loading. There's a point where it's loading and it's not actually sort of, it hasn't got the user yet, all right? I want to have it so it looks a bit like this. So look, imagine if it could look something like this. That's pretty clean, right? That's actually pretty clean. And uh, I want to get that working. So how do we get this? in play right because that's clean as hell right so what i'm gonna do juan says hi sonny thanks for the amazing work i'm really learning for the first time after years thank you so much dude um so what we're gonna do now is inside of app.js right here right so in app.js so i'm gonna go to app.js and then here we have everything happening we have the sort of you know the user notification stuff but what i'm gonna do now is actually have it so remember we pulled the loading state and so i'm gonna say okay if it's loading right then I'm going to return a different bit of JSX. Oops, not that. Yeah, if it's, I'm going to return a different bit of JSX now. I'm going to create a app loading. So I'm going to create a app loading container. So this is going to be a div. And inside of it, I'm going to have app loading contents, another div. Okay, so I'm going to have another div. And we're going to quickly go ahead and set those ones up. Okay, so I'm going to do app loading. Let's go ahead and chuck those at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do this. So say const app loading. Save. There we go. We've got app loading. And then we've also got the second one, which was app loading contents. These are two styled components. And let me know, hit the thumbs up button if you like the um, <laughs> part is when you can get married. If you really like styled components, I am a fan, honestly. And we didn't even use the most powerful thing, like the props use case, right? So it's actually extremely, really powerful. Sunny, best, the best. Go, go, go. Appreciate it, dude. Five likes away from 750. Wow. Oh man. And you see, we didn't even actually make full power of, of, of React Router. We didn't actually use much of React Router. So you don't actually fully need it, but you guys can, I, I implemented it because I want to make it so that you can extend on it. And by having React Router in place, you guys don't have to ask, you know, how do we have it inside of this? We just, you can pretty much use it. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, where we have this um i'm gonna go ahead and pop in here and then what i'm gonna do is inside of here i'm gonna have an image and this is the slack logo now that cool little spinner that you just saw this is a slack logo by the way so oh go ahead and see something oh okay something looks ugly and this is because i have not done this one. Oh, there we go ah scared me for a sec all right so you see now there's a huge logo that's kind of stuck in the beginning right so we're gonna fix that in a sec but what I want to do is that um, sunny programming seems so complicated in a good way. Thank you so much, dude. Um, so here, I'm going to actually install something called React Spin Kit. 
Okay, so you guys can check out their docs. Their docs are really cool, actually. And they're very simple the way they explain it. They show you a bunch of examples, but it's this guy right here, Kyle Matthews. And he actually shows the use cases in a demo screen if you want to check it out. But right now, I'm going to show you how to implement it, okay? Command J to pull it up and say yarn add React Spin Kit. We're going to go and install that. Now, once we've installed that while it's doing it, I'm going to import Spinner, import Spinner from React Spin Kit. And then what I'm going to do, one like away. Whoa. Our signs law says, Sunny, I'm 11 years old. Can I join the zero to four stack? Of course. Yes, dude. We have 12 year old in there. We have a 14 year old in there. Two 14 year olds in there. There's no age limit. 751 likes. That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Like, wow. That's just like unheard of level of craziness. Like how we get so much support is just unreal. Like, I don't care, man. We, we don't have a hundred thousand subs yet and we are crushing channels with hundreds of thousands of subs so we're killing it dude killing it so now let's go ahead and say at spinner like so and then we're gonna go oh no that's horrible spinner and then ooh, spinner there we go nice let's kick it up a bit spinner and then here i'm gonna go ahead and say okay the name of the spinner is this one. You can get the names from the demo page and I would recommend checking it out, right? Finha says, that is so sick. That's what I'm talking about, dude. I'm gonna color purple and fade in of none, but split second. So I don't want any animation. I just want it to pop straight in. So you have to say none. Okay, I'm gonna get save. Uh, Govin says, I did three projects from Sony's channel and I got an offer of 1,500 euros a month, but sadly couldn't make a cut in the final round. Dude, well done, firstly, okay? That's all it's all about. Face the rejection. It, that's a good thing right now the next interview you have you're gonna crush it uh, trust me and if it's not that one you'll crush the next one but it will happen it'll come and you'll walk into that interview one day saying you know i'm just i'm ready for this man and that confidence will come through we teach a lot of this inside the course but it's really like honestly anonymous group says i'm gonna keep this energy up that's it dude keep this up man all right Harv says i was waiting for you dude finally you're back i hope you can continue making videos like this regards thank you so much dude appreciate you um, so at this point now, we've got the if loading. So now, okay, let's go ahead and refresh. You see, it pops up while it's loading, but we need to style it now, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go to my app loading, and I'm actually gonna make this look a bit cleaner. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump on a few things. Um, Adam says, I've, I've actually started penning these builds out physically instead of building them straight away so I can concentrate on why the code is used more. I've learned so much. Dude, that's incredible. That's what I'm talking about, man. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So. Look, you want to chuck in text align center, padding bottom 100 pixels, display flex, flex direction column, justify content center, align item center. Now, while you're styling this, you don't want to keep refreshing and kind of guessing, okay? So what I do is I go to here and I say, if true, while it's doing, while I'm sort of working it out, right? So if true, and then it will kind of force the screen to stay on, right? And then I would just to make sure you don't leave it like that. And you say image, I'm gonna say height of 100 pixels. I'm gonna say padding of 20 pixels. I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna say a margin bottom of 40 pixels now as well. Okay, so margin 40, oops, margin 40. And then let's go ahead and refresh. Oh, no, wait a sec. This is actually, this should be in the other container. This should be over here. I got it mixed up. We should chuck this one in the actual contents. There we go. And you see that guys, look, that's the actual loader, okay? Please share your working experience. I do inside the coaching calls. I think we can complete. Hitesh said it. Oh, Hitesh said it. I think we can hit 800 likes. Let's do it, man. If we can break 800 before the end of this video, man, crazy. All right. Anonymous group says, Sonny, I killed this build. <laughs> exactly, dude. That's what I'm talking about. All right. So I want to add a margin bottom because right now it's touching it. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the bottom of this. I'm going to say margin bottom 40 and it will drop it a little bit away. Nice. Now, how do I get this to center out? Okay. So I'm going to do display grid. Place item center, height of 100, view height, and a width of 100 on the app loading container. Okay, boom, save. And there you go. Okay, now we've got this little loader. Okay, now what I can do is I can change this Boolean back to loading so it's no longer forced to true. And I hit save, all right? And now check this out, guys. Are you ready for this? Boom, loading. While it's loading, it's gonna be here. And then when the user comes, it'll go ahead and pop us in. That's clean. I don't even care. That's so clean. It makes me excited. Like you can tell, I, I can't fake this level of excitement, right? I know it's geeky. I don't give a crap. Like that is a geek out moment. I was just like on the other day, like this Stripe checkout team jumped into the Netflix challenge. I blew my mind when I saw that. The actual Stripe checkout team were in 
the chat. That's insane, man. I couldn't believe that. So this is a uh, styled components, not regular CSS. We're just doing styled components. And it has a lot of pros and cons. It has a lot of pros, sorry, a lot of pros. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and save. And now look at this, guys. If we hit refresh, boom, nice, perfect, right? And then you click on the channel and there you go. That is so slick. That's really, really nice, right? So at this point, guys, I think we are, I think we're ready to deploy this app. Are you guys ready to deploy this? Let me know. Let me know right now. Are you ready to deploy this application to Firebase and go ahead and uh, yeah, get this thing working? All right. Let's go ahead and do this, guys. Smash the thumbs up button if you're excited. A new pump, please stop spamming, dude. Yes, I've already built that. All right, Vikram says, I'm ready, dude. That's it. Anonymous group, dude, I'm going to have to time you out, dude. So please don't do that. All right. Put a link into yes, we got everyone getting ready for this. Nice. Sunny, is it necessary to learn Tailwind CSS? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a new trendy sort of thing, I'd say. All right. Um, all right. So everyone's ready for this, right? So I'm going to show you how to go ahead and deploy this, okay? So let's find a quick, let's find a nice song. There we go. Let's, let's bring this up. This is good. All right. So to deploy your app, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and pop open your terminal. And here I'm going to go ahead and say Firebase login. So the first thing you want to do is log in. Okay. Now I've already logged in, so I don't need to do this, but you need to go ahead and say Firebase login first. The next step is going to be Firebase init. Okay. Now Firebase init basically goes ahead and sets up your application with Firebase. Okay. So this is just a huge terminal right now. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go down with the arrow keys to hosting. Okay. Now you can see you've got a bunch of other stuff here, but we're interested in hosting today. So we're going to click hosting on the space bar and enter. Now you're going to click use an existing project. Okay. So I'm going to click that. And then we should see a list of our projects inside of this account. Right. So at this point, the one that we created right now was actually going to go ahead and say, you guys can see all these builds that I've done. It's crazy. Uh, right now we have the Slack clone, right? And this Slack clone YouTube, right? So I'm going to go ahead and hit that one. And then here, what do you want to use as your public directory? This is extremely important. Do not mess this up, all right? If you do, do Firebase in it and do the whole step again, all right? But at this point, what you're going to do is, and guys, in the meantime, I wonder if we can break 800 likes by the time we deploy. How crazy would that be? Let's do it. We finish, it will finish this on such a high, man. So in the public directory, I'm going to type in build, okay? So it's going to be build, all right? So I'm going to hit build and then configure it as a single page app. Yeah, so you're gonna click yes with a Y. Okay, so I'll do this, boom, save, and then set up automatic builds and deploy with GitHub. No, we're not gonna do that. And then it sets it up, okay? The next step, yes, you guys have started guessing it right now. We're gonna do npm run build, or you can do yarn build, it doesn't really matter at this point, right? But npm run build. Now, important step, what this does is it basically goes ahead, and there's loads of things when we build our app, like hot reloading and a bunch of other stuff, right? We don't always need that in the final production build. We don't even need it in the final production build because our customers aren't developers. They just need the fastest app. So we basically trim out all the fat of the app and then we basically go ahead and create an optimized production build. And as you can see here, it says pretty much we're gonna go ahead and create an optimized production build. So once this is done, it will basically bundle up our application into a lovely folder over here called build, okay? Now, something important to know, you do not touch the build folder pretty much, okay? So you don't really mess around with the build folder. In, instead, the way you need to do it is that if you touch any of your code after it's gone ahead and finished bundling, remember, you need to run npm run build again because it, it would be, your build would not have the latest changes inside. So you need, if you change the code, you need to go ahead and do npm run build again, and then it will work. And by the way, guys, I hope you like the proper merch. It's pretty cool. Just saw it in the, in the camera, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and say, we're almost 800 likes. Oh my God, let's keep going. Smash the like button if you're enjoying this. So now we do it. We do the big moment, guys. We're gonna go ahead and hit that button, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and drop a track. Right. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to do that. We're going to say Firebase deploy. All right. And this is about to deploy this app to Firebase. Right. So it's found the folders in the build folder and it's uploading the folders and it will give us a URL in just a sec. And I will go ahead and share that URL and you guys can go check this out. It released it and it gave it 
hosting URL. Boom, that's what I'm talking about, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in the chat right now. And we have a fully functional application right now. Go ahead and check it out. Let's go ahead and see this out right now, guys. Let's see this. Check it out, guys. And look at this, it's loading for me. I'm signing in. Let's go ahead and check it out. Go ahead and check it out. Let's see if we can do this. And you know what? I think it's only right. I think it's only right that we have one song that does this one, right? So go ahead, Papa Reactor team. I'm gonna jump in on my account right here. And there you go, right? I'm gonna go in the Papa Fam chat. Who's gonna meet me in the Papa Fam chat? Yo, what's up, guys? Yo, look at this. <laughs> look at that, guys. Everyone's popping in. What's up, Vikram? Look at this, guys. Oh man, this is so sick. Is it lit? <laughs> A part of the Papa Fab. How cool is that, guys? That's so sick, right? It's working. Manuel says I'm playing the same song here. Hey, that's it, guys. Look at that. Ayush's chat, right? We got ABC, we got the YouTube chat. Look at YouTube here, I was first. How cool is that, guys? That's so, so powerful. Incredible, incredible stuff. Let's do a overview of what we built today, right? So somebody said there's an overscroll error on the uh, sidebar. Yes, there could be an overscroll error on the sidebar. Uh, remember, if we what can happen there is you can basically truncate if it is an issue, or you can go ahead and do something else. But you can go ahead and remember, we built this entire app in three hours, guys. I'm incredible. So yes, if there's a tiny little bug somewhere, we'll fix it. That's fine. It's all good. The final build in the Papa GitHub repo. Now, a few things to mention, guys. Let's go ahead and say, we have two days left to join the Papa Fam. First link in the description. Thank you, Aisha. She says you've done a great job today. Guys, we do this kind of stuff all the time inside the course right now, and it's honestly the best, right? We go ahead, we crush it. We do incredible builds. We do coaching calls. Well, I just sit down, I break this stuff out with you. Part of the Papa Fam, zero to full stack hero is live. It's crushing. We have over 230 members strong right now. Check it out. The first link in the description, okay? And this is me saying it to you because I have a huge sale on right now. And if you guys want to get a part of that, then it's going to end in two days. And I don't want that out because I'm going to be closing the doors to the internal Papa Fam after this, those two days. Now, again, honestly, really don't. I'm going to focus on everything. Uh, Sunny, you're getting faster and faster with this, this type of clone. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Gerard. Thank you so much from uh, Ivory Coast. Amazing stuff. Vikram says this project was so good. Uh, guys, this is incredible. There is on that note. Thank you so much, guys. And I wanted to say, um, yeah, just feel free to hit the thumbs up button and share the video out. Let's get this video to as many people as possible. Remember, our goal with the Papa Fam is not to just like create cool stuff and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But right, guys, we're here to change lives. Like my goal is to really help you guys change your life, right? As in like land a job go ahead and just become a better, more dedicated person. And that's what I'm trying to do with these builds. That's why the Papa Fam exists. That's why we do what we do. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who was a part of today's build, who was here. And if you're watching the replay, thank you so much. And I appreciate you. And I want to say, guys, today we built an incredible app together. We built a really, really incredible app. And uh, it, honestly, it works so, so amazing. And somebody, I, okay, we've got a little error over there where it kind of overflows. That's fine though. We have this incredible app. I'm going to show you my one local one. And uh, yeah, guys, this is absolutely insane. We built the Slack clone and the code is available in the second link. The link to the Papa GitHub repo is available. That's also on sale. I mean, that's going to be coming off sale very shortly. And uh, Fantana says, Sunny, love this. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, guys. And uh, Mohammed says, have a great weekend. That's it, guys. I want to say have an amazing weekend. This video had Redux, React, Firebase hooks, and it was a complete overhaul of the previous Slack clone. It's so goddamn powerful. It's so goddamn clean. And we guys, we topped it off with styled components. So again, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. This is your boy, Papa React, signing out. I will see you guys in the next video, guys. Peace. I appreciate all of you. 
honestly really really crazy stuff thank you dia and i'm just gonna give i'm gonna read these comments as i always do as we tune out today but guys thank you so much and i will see you in the next video peace